The top of the mountain can be a lonely place for a tiger, especially for the ones that race through the wild without ever getting tamed. The Belleville Tigers have ripped and roared through the KLAA since they entered the league in 2017, winning the first 27 league games attempted before finally falling two weeks ago. Meanwhile, the tractors of Dearborn Forts and are on a revenge tour. After last season's blowout loss to Belleville, the tractors tuned up to track down teams like the Tigers. You are about to witness the very exciting story of a city and its people. It will be an adventure that will open new sights in familiar surroundings. It is a story of a city seeking new horizons in a resolute contest with great challenges. That city is Detroit. Ford's and tough is the motto around here, but this squad has speed and cohesion too. And the undefeated and sixth ranked tractors won't be timid this time around. It's a top tier matchup between two of the titans of the KLAA. And it all gets decided right here tonight in Dearborn on the preps coverage of the Friday Night Clash presented by Woodward Sports. Beautiful night, 55 degrees at Charles Justice Field in Dearborn, Michigan, where Dearborn Fortson ranks sixth in Division I, welcomes in number four Belleville in the Tigers in a KLAA diamond of a matchup. My name is Chad Bush alongside Sam Stick Day. Glad to be with you. Partner, we've got a dream matchup. Dearborn Fortson has lost four straight. They're at home. They are 4-0 undefeated. Belleville took a loss after 27 straight games that they swiped out as soon as they joined this league we've got an exciting battle tonight it's going to be amazing we thought last week was a bunch of big boys hitting between dakota and chippewa valley when i was walking around on that field earlier i felt small chad there are some big boys on both sides of the ball and this is going to be a great game belleville like you said coming off that loss two games ago i still think they have that bitter taste in their mouth but forts it after well, the game last year i think they got a little bit of bitter taste in their mouth so we know it's going to be a great matchup tonight yeah forts it doesn't want to talk about last year 69 to nothing Walker, uh, the head coach, uh, said, listen, no excuses. We got beat. There was nothing dirty on their end. It's my job to get them ready. We'll be ready tonight. It's a proud forts and program. Uh, they're ready to show out Belleville, ultra talented, about 19 Division One prospects. Yeah, and all of them, great players. And, you know, that's how you build a team, and that's exactly what the coach of Belleville has done since he's come over. Uh, these players are just, uh, it's starting to become a program that's desired for everybody to want to be a part of just because of the culture. And when you're getting looked at by all of those colleges, chances are scouts may check you out if you're not on the radar. That's right. Belleville led by Jermaine Crowell, who came over from Cass Tech High School as a longtime assistant. And he's got a lot of lineage behind him in Division I football. Meanwhile, on the other side, uh, this is Fuad Walker Zaban, the head coach. He's been here since Jeff Stergalis left. He's got this program rolling since he started. They don't have a losing season. He's on his way to his 15th straight winning season here at Fordson. Yeah, and with the talent that he has on the field tonight, the athleticism and the big guys that he has up front, you know, they have a good chance to make some noise and, you know, kind of redeem themselves from last year. But I think they're going to put all that behind them as soon as they hit the field tonight, as soon as they step between the lines. It's just going to be good fashion football where these guys are going to be hitting there's going to be passing there's going to be running like this is the type of game you want to see on a friday night there's some prime time players we'll start first with belleville uh so many weapons stick when you look at their offense as uh, we get a look at their impact players belleville really has uh as we told you the talent to make this thing go they're looking at a couple of guys as impact players you start on the offensive side what do you see uh, you see Rashard Wilson, their wide receiver, somebody that's got to get going tonight, you know. Uh, he's the one who makes their freshman quarterback very comfortable, and I would be comfortable throwing the ball to him, too. Here he is warming up right now. Uh, he had three TD catches and, you know, 46, 28, and 40 yards last week. And so he, you know he can get in the end zone and find it. And then when you flip to the other side of the ball, you got Jeremiah Caldwell, Another amazingly athletic player who's going to make his presence known. And you love that when your free safety is the guy that's your hard hitter and it's the guy that sets the tone for the defense. 
Yeah, a guy that's got offers from uh, Michigan State, Tennessee. He'll decide soon. And then you look on the other side, and, and hey, look, Dearborn Fordson is not hurting for talent. They've got Division One prospects up and down. And we'll start first on the offensive side of the football, a guy that a lot of this state knows, maybe the top receiver in this state, and Antonio Gates, Jr. Yeah, and he's looking at going to Michigan State. You know, obviously, like you said, a big D1 prospect. And the genes on the kid is definitely something that you look for. Great players, plays above, high points the ball if it's in the air. Just athleticism upon athleticism. You see him here warming up. And we're going to see a lot of number seven today for Fordson. Yep, you sure will. Antonio Gates, Jr., of course, the future Hall of Famer. His father, Antonio Gates, uh, long time. San Diego Charger who retired a year ago and then on the defensive side of the football uh, they've got a really special linebacker yeah he's the coach's son but he's the leader and he's a stud in Muhammad Zaban yeah big hitter great great um, when it comes to just the tactics of tackling and how to do it properly and you know that's what happens when your coaches you're learning from such a young age stick lock lift where to put your shoulder not lead with your head and he's almost like if you were to have someone watch tape on how to play he's what you want to do Dearborn Fortson 4-0 undefeated number six in division one taking on Belleville the preseason number one by some polls They've got a loss already this year. Can't afford to take another one. We've got the Friday Night Clash Week 5 coming up right after this, right here on The Prep, presented by Woodward Sports. Man! Uh-oh! Carmen's falling behind. Let's give her the hiss of shame. Don't ride the bike of shame. Get tons of equipment and free fitness training. Join today for just $10 a month. Make sure you download the Woodward Sports app in the App Store and the Google Play Store today. Take Woodward Sports with you wherever you go and listen live on your phone or mobile device. All right, this is Adam, take two. Mark? I guess. <laughs> I go like this. <laughs> the best part about playing football in Texas has to be the reaction from the community. I want to encourage others to play volleyball or choir because you get to experience new things and do stuff that you've never done before. My reason why is passion. My reason why is pride. Jermaine Crowell, the head coach for the Belleville Tigers. He's in his seventh year, former longtime assistant at Cass Tech. Under Thomas Wilcher, an impressive 47 and five over the last four and a half years. We talked to him before the ball game and got his thoughts on his team in this game tonight. Jermaine Crowell, Belleville Tigers. I mean, I think that, you know, first of all, I'm just happy that we're actually playing football. I mean, sure. and adjusting to po uh, post COVID is, is, has been interesting. You know, because you're getting a lot of kids who they stay first time back in school for over a year. You know, you're going through that transition. And I think uh, a lot of teams across the state are going through a lot of the similar problems. You know, we ran into COVID a, a week or two ago. And, you know, it took a lot of kids down. But, uh, you know, we, we, we fought through and persevered. But we haven't gone through anything that nobody else in the state has gone through. So, I mean, they're one of the top teams in the state year in, year out. I used to deal with them when I was over at Cass, so, so we're very familiar with each other. Uh, we have really close games and, you know, somewhat of a rivalry has been, 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 been built. And we want to take it, we want to give it the seriousness that it deserves. And I know that they're going to be itching to get back at us because I think we, we had a, a, a pretty big win over them last year. And, and I expect them to give us everything we can handle. And then both of us are still trying to compete for the league title. So... You know, I think whoever wins still has a shot. I think, you know, the person who loses, it, especially if it's us, you know, you're pretty much out of it. And you got to worry about trying to make the state with two losses. So, I mean, he's, he's, he's making freshman mistakes. I mean, he's locking on the receivers and he's holding the ball too long. And, you know, th th when he gets when he gets going good, he has a habit of, you know, he now he wants to push the deep ball instead of going through his progression. So it's a transition for him. Oh, Coach, you, you got a lot of – our receiving core is like our receiving and DB core. We got a lot of skilled athletes. So, you know, with that being the case, you know, he doesn't he doesn't have to do a lot. Just get him the ball. Get him the ball quick and they'll make plays. And I think 
as the season progresses, he'll learn that, that, that that's what they're capable of doing. You know, right now he's still, I say by week seven, he'll be them figured a few things out and, and things will be to settle down. And we, really you'll see what we have because as of right now, our kids haven't played together. Like with COVID and with a lot of the different injuries that happened during camp, I don't know what we, we haven't had the whole team together. You know, so Miles is down, Aaron is down. Um, Aaron Alexander? Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. Like, they got injuries where they could probably go, but I don't know if we're going we gonna to use them. So, I don't know. We got plenty of linemen that's hurt, but, I mean, Casey Gordon broke his leg. He won't be back this year. Uh, Marcus Johnson, Big Mo, he's he's out with a meniscus. So we lost some, we lost, we lost, but it don't, I don't need people to, I don't want everybody to know how many people we missing, but yeah, we down a few. I think Jay Sean Green is having an all-state kind of year. Like he, he's one of the unsung guys. He's a defensive lineman who's super active, who, who, who did a really good job of, uh, you know, having being called upon to play offense as well. And now he's starting on both both sides of the ball, and he's 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 I'm really proud of him. And they haven't again they haven't had a chance to play together, but once we do get a chance to, to get them all out there together, I think that they're going to be really good. Like just the just the playing together. Like this will be the first time that, and I still don't think we'll have the projected starting group out there, but we'll have at least three of the the five out there. So that'll be that'll be have I'll be happy for that. Just trying to get better every week. Like and that people say that, but I'm I'm serious. We got a new offensive line, a lot of babies out there, you know, they gotta get some 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 snaps in order to get some 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 idea of what's going on because as of right now, you know, it's still early and they haven't played together. Like we we just trying to get to where we I've got the same groups playing together. You know, and then teaching them how to practice at a pace. Like everything today is about practicing with a pace. And right now, it's, we still not there yet. We, we still, I should never have people standing around. I don't like people standing around. Beautiful night in Dearborn, Michigan. It's our week five clash coming up between Fordson and Belleville. My name is Chad Bush alongside Sam Stick Day. 70 degrees, beautiful night for football. We got the thoughts of both head coaches, including the 15-year head coach, Coach Zaban, Walker Zaban. We'll get into his nickname, Walker, later. Let's hear from Coach Zaban now. Walker Zaban, head coach, Fortson High School. Well, I mean, talking about the start of the season, obviously, you know, trying to win each game is, uh, uh, you know, that's, your, that's what you're trying to do. So that means it's going well. Um, now, there's a lot of things we need to clean up as a team to get better, and uh, those are the areas that we're going to be working on. Number one, I think the best, the most uh, important area we got to clean up is the penalty area. Um, we've uh, just been penalized way too much, and uh, we've been kind of concentrating on, on that in practice, and hopefully we can uh, make sure that we do that. Uh, to be quite honest with you, I think uh, throughout the summer and uh, through the beginning of the year, we've done a good job of uh, gelling and uh, the team chemistry has been very well. Uh, the leadership has been pretty good. Uh, these guys have worked really hard in the off season and they continue to work hard uh, in the weight room. So those are the areas that's kind of led us to be where we're at right now and obviously starting off at Wayne State going against uh, Canton, a, a very tough program and a very physical team and being able to match up with them and, and play good sound football um, has, and it has carried on over the last few games. Uh, they, you know, Belleville presents a big challenge because of their athleticism. Obviously they have uh, major size as well. But their athleticism and their speed is, is kind of the area that uh, is the scary part. You know, their big play ability. You mentioned Canton. Canton has big play ability, but it's more of a physical and deception type uh, big play. And in terms of Belleville, you're looking at their speed and their athleticism, and they do a terrific job of putting you in position uh, or putting you in a bad position. So. Uh, that's the area that uh, is kind of scary with them. Well, we said the key word, you know, his, his leadership over the last, uh, um, this past off season and, and so far the first month of the season, 
has been tremendous. His uh, work ethic has been outstanding. And uh, he's learning and becoming better at seeing things out on the field. So um, those areas have definitely improved over the last few years. Well, uh, yeah, you, you mentioned Antonio. Antonio is a big key of, uh, of the passing game as well as the offense because he garners attention. And when you garner that much attention, that kind of opens up your run game. Um, but, you know, ultimately, none of this is going to work if your line is not doing their job. And uh, so learning and becoming better at seeing things out on the field. So um, those areas have definitely improved over the last few years. Well, uh, yeah, you, you mentioned Antonio. Antonio is a big key of, uh, of the passing game as well as the offense because he garners attention. And when you garner that much attention, that kind of opens up your run game. Um, but, you know, ultimately, none of this is going to work if your line is not doing their job. And uh, so far, tremendous job of game planning and uh, putting our guys in, in position to succeed. You know, we have two sets of twins uh, who are pretty special. And, you know, uh, they, they've done a terrific job. We got the uh, Parker twins and we got the Bazzi twins. And both, both set of twins are... They're just great kids and they work hard, you know, and, uh, and they have uh, a big mortar and, and that's all you can ask from the defensive standpoint, you know. So uh, those guys have stepped up for us huge. Look, uh, uh, an L is an L and to be honest with you, we're just going back to the drawing board and working on us and making sure that we have improved and, and putting us in position to, uh, to win a game. So it's not... You know, what happened last year happened last year. To me, it's over with. Um, I'm sure the kids are still bothered by it, but it is what it is. That's, that's on me for not doing my job and not preparing us uh, as best as I could. And uh, this is a new year and we're here to play a game. Today I'm gonna tell you about sportsmanship because it's important. Treat your opponents the way you would want to be treated. <laughs> my mom says that. Listen to the referees. It's their job. Be nice to their team and our team. Cheer them on. Always play fair. It's the right thing to do. It's sportsmanship. It's not that hard. My dad and my grandfather are officials. I've grown up around officials and seeing how much they enjoy being part of the games. As a student athlete, I've always appreciated the people out there who are willing to give back to the kids. The Legacy program lets me officiate while I'm still in high school, working younger kids' games. Officiating gives me a better understanding of the game, I get to make some pretty good money for a high school kid, and I even get to spend some quality time with my dad. There's help wanted, just whistle. Welcome back. He is Sam Stick Day. My name is Chad Bush. This is week five of the Friday Night Clash Series presented by Woodward Sports. Glad to have coverage here on the prep. And uh, we've got a dandy stick. I, I know you look at this matchup and it's a perfect night. We've had rain this week, but we're ready for kickoff. I want to talk about your key to victory uh, for each team. Uh, let's start first uh, on the side of the visitors in Belleville. Well, for Belleville, it's it's pretty simple to me. You keep Underwood, Underwood comfortable and confident early. He's their freshman quarterback. You need to get him in a rhythm. You need to get him comfortable. So, you know, some check down passes, something like that, just to get him into the flow of the game. I think that's very important for Belleville to do because he's going to be kind of like the, the grease that keeps the engine going. That's they right. have all the talent surrounding him. It's just can he put it all together today? And then you go to the other side, you're looking at Fordson. Limit the chunk plays and, you know, make sure that the potent – Belleville offense has to earn everything. Not 70 yards, not sure. 80 yards in a snap of a finger, but make them work up and down the field. And man, both of these teams are ready to hit each other tonight. As soon as the coin flip happened, saw Antonio Gates Jr. running to the sideline, jumping up and down. <laughs> he got me excited. I'm ready to go. We are set to go right to left. Belleville, uh, excuse me, Fortson will kick it off. And the blue tops, the tractors, coached by Fuad Walker Zaban in his 15th year. 88 grad of Fordson and the head coach for the Belleville Tigers of course is Jermaine Crowell in his seventh year we are set to kick it off this is Hattie Saad who we watched in a soccer game score three goals yesterday and Saad is going to boot this one where it can't be returned and here we go 
This is the potent offense for Belleville as we get a look at the 14-year-old quarterback for Belleville and a young man by the name of Bryce Underwood, a guy that just turned 14 just a couple of weeks ago. Bryce Underwood at quarterback. It's astounding. Honestly, the fact that a 14-year-old is starting tonight against a team like Fordson, you know, he's going to earn everything that he gets. Davion Pitchford is the running back as we meet the starting lineup. Jeremiah Beasley also at another running back spot. Ty Lockett is one of the wide receivers, along with Kevin Sims. Shadi Wilson, also a wide receiver, along with Jeremiah Caldwell, Cameron Moore, and we'll meet the starting offensive line in just a moment. We are set to go. Belleville who uh, took a loss for the first time in KLAA play two weeks ago. And it's Underwood in the shotgun formation from his own 20. Three wide receivers to the left and one to the right. And the give is up the middle and it's Davion Pitchford, the running back. And this is a guy that uh, really has some great power to go with that balance and speed as well. He kind of has it all. Yeah, you look there, you know, first play of the game, we talked about getting the freshman quarterback comfortable. Nice little handoff, wasn't for a big play, but gets you in a comfortable and manageable down in distance. Two and six is a lot better than like second and 10, second and 15. Four yard gain just underway, 30 seconds gone by from Charles Justice Field. Glad you're with us for number six, Fordson hosting number four, Belleville. The throw is left side and this is a caught pass and up across the 40 yard line, that's Deshaun Lee, the senior wide receiver, and he's one of about five wide receivers that gets some burn. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> we were talking about the speed and that should have been, you know, maybe a five, six yard game, but he was able to turn the corner and pick up about 15 yards and the speed is already on display for Belleville as they come out four wide right now. They beat Livonia Stevenson last week, 58 to nothing after their loss to Churchill the prior week. There is a snub up front. And that's part of the defensive front, and that is our impact player of the game, Mr. Zaban. And that's what we were talking about, you know, just perfect pin, perfect tackling right there. Sticks his shoulder, gets lower than the running back, and absolutely blows up that play. If he's making those types of plays all night, Fortson's going to have a great night here. So a loss on the play, and that'll back it up. Here's the starters, Nate Johnson up front for Belleville. He's a big one at 6'5", 330 pounds. Ooh. Nathan Clark, the center. Jeremiah Warren at one tackle. Jacoby Watkins as well, and Camden Weaver. Watkins is headed to SEMO. Get to the backs and receivers in a moment. Second down and 12 from his own 37, loss in the play of two. Underwood, the quarterback, handoff left side. Pitchford, and he is tackled from behind the line of scrimmage. Once again. From who else? <laughs> Mr. Muhammad. Check that, that was Zaban. Yes, Mr. Yeah. Muhammad Zaban, I was right the first time. <laughs> An amazing play, you know, back-to-back -back plays like that. And this is what we were talking about with the first set of downs that they had. You know, a second and five is manageable. You can put that on your freshman quarterback. Now, freshman quarterback, third and 15, what are you doing, Chad? Well, good question. Pitchford is the running back along with Bradley and Lockett, the wide receivers for Belleville. And uh, it's an electric offense. A new offensive coordinator, Kyle Short, takes over. He came over from Rockford in the offseason. Good program. Very good program on the left side of the state. So here we go in a third and 15 from their own 33. Motion right to left by Lee. Pocket breaks down pressure. The throw left side is caught. This is Cameron Moore, the H-back, and he's near the first down. Looks to be about a yard shy at the 47-yard line, and this has got go for it written all over it, partner. Yeah, it's that, it's that type of the field that you want to be in if you're going to go for it, because, you know, a punt eh, is not going to gain you too many yards if you miss this. But I like that play call. Get your quarterback rolling right, bring some more wide receivers this way, flood the zone, and he was able to find number nine for a nice catch. Gain of 14 on the play, the pass to the H-back. Cameron Moore, 5'11", 180 senior. So here comes a fourth down on their own side of the 50, the negative side, and realignment now with Caldwell. Young quarterback in a tight spot, fourth and one, shotgun. Handoff up the middle, first down and more, it's Pitchford. Up the gut, across the 40, into forts in territory at the 38. And how about that, a big gain of 10 when you needed just one. 
I'll tell you what, arm tackles are not going to bring him to the ground. He's looking like a bowling ball out there. Kind of Remember Maurice Jones drew? That's kind of what he's reminded me of, the way he's built. Pitchford is just a big back, big thick thighs, and he's going to get the ball all night long. Let's take a look at the starters for uh, Fordson. They will start their back end with uh, Jagbeer, Gates, Saeed, and Smith. We'll get to the linebacking crew and backs of the moment. Pitchford right side, and he's got a short gain of two. Coming up to make the stick is Gates. A little bit of talking. I told you before the game, right after the kickoff, he was doing that, flexing, coming over, talking to his uh, team, getting them fired up. He is the emotional leader of this team, and you could see it early. Baydoon, a linebacker, along with uh, Zaban, who will call quite a bit. He's the captain of that defense. He's their leading tackler, four-point student. And then the defensive line is very interesting. It is uh, two sets of twins on the defensive line. That's right, two sets of twins in uh, Parker, Parker, Bazi, and Bazi. Now, uh, Muhammad Bazi is out tonight, so it's three-fourths the twin combo. There's a sack in the backfield, and down goes Underwood. And the sack coming by way of the aforementioned, we just talked about him, Number 55 for Fordson, one of those twins, Mr. Armand Parker. Yeah, he absolutely swallowed him up there. A mistake on the line, 51 was trying to come over and rotate and pick up that block, but he could not get it. And there you go, nice sack right there. That was a big play, because the momentum was starting to pile up for Belleville right there. Picking it up on fourth down, you're making some moves. Now all of a sudden you got another third and long. Let's see if they can do it again. The D line. We told you a couple twins. How about six, four, 300 pound twins next to each other as two D linemen. And then you've got the Bazi twins, uh, Muhammad Bazi and Hussein Bazi. Now, Hus Hussein is out. He's been out since week one after the kickoff classic. Here we go, third and long. Underwood in the shotgun, four wide receiver set. Has time, throws it. Safety valve left side, safety valve has room, has a first down, has a convoy all the way down to the 15 yard line. How about the dump down check down that goes to Rashad Wilson, a guy that Stick highlighted as an impact player in the beginning, and Shotty gets it done here. I'll tell you this, Hassan Beydoun had a beeline on this guy. All he had to do was make the open field tackle or turn him back inside, but he absolutely whiffed in four. You could see Shotty's speed, and he just wouldn't go down. Shotty had three touchdowns a few weeks ago. And uh, he's quite the player. There's uh, the running back has checked in. This is the backup Jeremiah Beasley. And he tries the left side behind the offensive line of Big Nate Johnson and Camden Weaver. And that's a short game. Yeah, Beasley, you know, Pitchford is their starting back. Beasley is just as effective. A little thunder and lightning, if you will. A lot of power early. And then you hit him with Beasley with the speed. And it's tough if you're a defense. Jermaine Caldwell says, look, we, we got about four, five, six backs. Now, there's a lot of injuries tonight for Belleville. They have players, a lot of impact players out of this game. We'll get to it in a moment. But uh, with what they have, they still have weapons. Second and nine from the left hash for Underwood. Getting the signs from the sideline. I like how they got all the funky signs again on the poster boards. Oh, it's yeah. always fun. Kyle Short, the OC. Back to pass, pressure coming, and down he goes. Zaban with a first hit, and the second hit, and the cleanup coming from number 18. Make it number 16, that's Mohamed Trabulsi making the play. Yeah, if I'm Fordson, I'm blitzing my middle linebacker almost every play, because he's been able to get through. The offensive line for Belleville looks a little confused on the blitz right now. So they've been able to get some big, big plays. Because Belleville's been moving pretty much at their will, except for a couple random sacks here and there, and puts them in these third and long situations. And the key for the defense of Fordson and, and their defensive coordinator, Munther Muhammad, he said, look, we just got to keep everything in front of us. No big plays, and, and, and here we go, the third and 18 from the 23. Underwood has time, floats it up, looking in zone, got a man, caught, touchdown, Tigers! Deshaun Lee in the corner of the end zone, and it's a 23-yard strike from Underwood to Lee. And the Tigers take the 6-0 lead. 
I mean, how much more impressive can you get? Three third and long conversions. You have a beautiful corner route here in the speed, the separation. All he had to do was put it up there and make sure he could run underneath it, and that's exactly what number three was able to do. Deshaun Lee, beautiful route, but even better throw by the rookie Bryce Underwood there. Rookie, <laughs> freshman. <laughs> well, and you said it. He did it in crunch time, in third down, in the money downs. The extra point is up, and the extra point is good from Braden Lane off the snap of Michael Hurst in the hold of Christian Rapley. 7-0 from Dearborn. We're back to the Friday night clash after this. The Tigers take the first lead. Yes! Uh oh! Carmen's falling behind. Let's give her the hiss of shame. Don't ride the bike of shame. Get tons of equipment and free fitness training. Join today for just $10 a month. Make sure you download the Woodward Sports app in the App Store and the Google Play Store today. Take Woodward Sports with you wherever you go and listen live on your phone or mobile device. Into the end zone is Belleville first. It was a 12-play drive. It was 80 yards, it took six minutes and 39 seconds, and it's the 23 yard and 15. Pass is caught and dropped immediately. The catch is made by number 12, that's Kevin Sims, but immediately tackled by the savvy defensive back and the guy who jumped the route. How about Muhammad Syed? He's been all over the field. Yeah, you've been calling his name a lot, and you know, for him coming up from that safety position to make that tackle it just shows his athleticism as well and how he can read an offense, and that's really what you're looking for out of your defensive back like that. Syed, a two-way guy, free safety, and they're probably their number two receiver. So that's the end of the first quarter. When we come back, Joey Radio will join us. At the end of the first quarter, Belleville with a 7-0 lead over the home team, the Tractors of Dearborn Forts. And we're back on the Friday Night Clash out of the prep right after this. There's just one place where students are students first. And athletics are played with purpose and perspective. That place is your local high school. High school sports offer more than the joy of competition. Studies show that student athletes are also likely to enjoy greater levels of achievement in other areas of their lives including academics, high school sports, a winning part of a complete education. Yes! Uh-oh, Carmen's falling behind. Let's give her the hiss of shame. Don't ride the bike of shame. Get tons of equipment and free fitness training. Join today for just $10 a month. Hey, it is Joey hanging out with the Forts and student section. You see the Planet Fitness towels, and I should have known, but I'm honestly disappointed in myself for coming to Dearborn without a clean fade. Look at these fades real quick. <laughs> Show off these clean fades. JP cuts, baby. <laughs> hey, but we're out here. I got to talk to the president, Yasmin. How are you doing? I'm doing great. Hey, I need you to say, and back to you to the field. And back to you! Here we go. Joey, no matter where he goes, he keeps it hyped. So does Underwood. A lot of hype on this uh, play. He is cracked behind the line of scrimmage and finally taken down. Zaban, of course, in the middle of it. Who else? And a long fourth down coming up. That was a huge defensive stand by Fortson right there. Especially when the quarterback gets out of the pocket here, he was able to break, what, one, two, three, four, Five tackles, escape, get around, but eventually the teamwork caught up with them, and great teamwork by Fords in there to take them down. Parker, a big part of it, and the cleanup coming from Hussein Beydoun. It's punting time for Belleville. They have punted four times this year. So this is uh, a flag, and it will move back. The huddle. Yeah. Both teams have uh, sort of a tie to cast tech. Cass Tech has been a pain in the neck for Fortson. They've eliminated them from the playoffs six of the last seven times they've played. A nemesis that may not happen this year. And, and of course, Jermaine Crowell knows Fortson well from his days at Cass Tech. So Cass Tech uh, may not be in the playoffs and in the way of Fortson. Here's a fourth and 18. 
And this is the punter, Anthony Andriana. And he will stand at his own 15 and bang it away. And it's a fair catch called for. With Mr. Do Everything. With Mr. Do Everything, <laughs> Mr. Saeed. Oh, and he's lucky he didn't get a 15-yard penalty right there. He just turned around and flipped the ball to a Belleville player right in front of the official. I think the official saw that it, he just did it first body there, but the wrong official could have read that the wrong way. For sure. Good job with the officials. We want to thank our food sponsor tonight, Lashish of Dearborn, doing a great job. What was your favorite uh, piece of food from that beautiful buffet they had? I mean, I don't know if it was the hummus, the lamb, the shrimp, the kebab, the kofta. The yeah, <laughs> like, I could go down. on. I, I ate everything. You ate like five lamb chops, I think. I think I ate all the lamb chops. Thank you, guys. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody knew about them. They were hidden underneath was, all the other meat. You know what I liked? I liked the gallon of garlic sauce they gave us. It was like one of those large styrofoam cups. And it made the booth smell delicious. Oh, oh yeah, my breath is kicking, brother. I apologize. <laughs> 10.40 left. This is Fortson football. And Fortson's got it from their own 46. Handoff. Covington up the middle. He's got a healthy gain of six. Across the 50 to the 53. Five and a half on the carry officially. It'll set up a second down and short for the Tractors. And you can tell these two teams just do not like each other. The way these guys are finishing their blocks. I mean, look at look at this double team right there on number one, all the way down the field by a, what 50 and 52. You got Fiaz yeah. and Kamari just absolutely yeah. pancaking them. Yeah, the the lead block there by Fiaz Alzeati. He's one of the strongest centers that Fortson has ever had, and he leads the charge there. They really like him. Second and short, just under 10 minutes to go till halftime. 7-0, the Road Tigers. Osmond in the shotgun. Two to his right, one to his left. Going to hand off Covington. Up the middle, has a first down. Hasmore inside the 40 to the 35. And here comes that ground game, and you see the momentum of the tractors starting to really move some Tigers. And a little more John on the field, but that time Belleville blitzed on the right side, uh, their right side, and the, the tractors were able to run away from it. You see right there, and they were able to get the first down. But that's exactly what you gotta do. If a team is blitzing, run away from it. Yep, three. Finally tackled in the secondary by Deshaun Lee. We've called his name at nauseum tonight. Fortson on the move, trying to tie this thing up in the second quarter. Belleville on the board first in their first drive, an 80-yard drive that saw the freshman Underwood go four for four. Motion right to left, fake give, handoff up the middle. This is Covington, and he's stuffed at the line. Nowhere to go that time, and he's cleaned up by the Tigers' number one. That's Jeremiah Beasley, the outside linebacker. Yeah, the right side worked last time. They tried the left, not as effective, but eh, still a pretty decent run. Get you on schedule, you know, you're gaining two, three yards. Not putting yourself in predictable situations. Second and manageable. If you're wondering about the kicking situation for Fordson, the kicking coach and the special teams coach, Mike Osman, feels good about his kicker. The young man that we watched a couple nights ago score three goals in the soccer game. And uh, a young man who we expect to see tonight at some point, Mr. Hattie. Second and eight. Osmond from the middle of the field, play action, looking post route, got a man, no, broken up beautifully on the play by Yarborough as they were looking for number five on the slant. That's Ahmed Harb. Yeah, that was just a good football play all the way around. It may have gotten there a little bit early, but not too early to where it's gonna be called. But yeah, if that pass is a little bit more on target and slows him down, I think he's getting that call 100%. But that's a good football play. I, I like agree. the no call there. I agree. Athletic play by Yarbrough, who's getting some love from the Grove. Ole Miss offered him. You spent some time down there, Chad, haven't you? I did. I've been <laughs> you in the Grove. speak highly of it. Yes, I do, and I, <laughs> as often as I can. <laughs> yes. Until I can sell you on going down for my next visit. I'm always interested. Eight minutes left in this uh, low-scoring defensive battle. Harbin motion, and we've got a false start on the tractors, and this will set them back. This is not what this offense is set up for, third and long. And so this changes things. 
as Fortson will make some substitutions and remove some players. And if you're Fortson, you're starting to get really frustrated with yourself because that's what's beating you right now, the turnover here on the other end. And now you, you had a manageable down and distance, but you push yourself back to third and long. And it's just going to be tough to convert. And you got to put points on the board against this Belleville team. Absolutely beautiful night here in Dearborn, man. Nice little sunset coming in. You got the smoke tower, the beautiful oh. brick building in the background. It's a real nice facility, and, and we're grateful for the kindness of all the folks, including the AD, Jeff Del Judas, who's been very kind to us and accommodating, as well as uh, Coach Zaban. Throw over the middle, same play, and this time it's caught. Wow, what a catch. Going down to make the catch again is the go-to guy, the big play guy in Saeed. Muhammad Saeed with a catch at the 20-yard line. Are they going to call that good? They will. They will, yeah. I mean, they don't get the luxury of the replay we're about to look at, so we'll see if this hit the ground or not. And even on replay, it's tough to tell. It's clean. I like how he finished the play there, though, like he's in the NFL. NFL. That, yeah, run it in. The mindset's already <laughs> there for him. What a first half for Muhammad Saeed. Everywhere. Zaban, the head coach, Walker said, hey, I'm telling you, we haven't we haven't seen anything from Gates yet, mm -mm. but we have seen some guys open, and, and that is the beneficiary of the attention. But how about that throw by Osmond? We haven't talked enough about Osmond. He's been on point tonight when the senior wants to throw the rock. Yeah, a couple of real nice throws, and when you need them, too. That's the important part. Inside the red zone at the 21-yard line. Play action, bubble screen right, the hot hand. Why not feed him? He'll get down inside the 18-yard line. They'll keep going to Mohamed Syed, their number two receiver. He's got uh, some catches now. As we take a look at uh, both these teams come in highly, highly ranked. We told you Belleville was number one in the preseason poll by some publications, and they are fourth still, even with that one loss. It tells you how the AP feels about them. And this is Dearborn Fortune, who's ranked sixth now, Stick. Their highest ranking since 2014. And that's why I was so excited for this matchup tonight. The big boys going at it, and this game actually means something. It's a big play right here. Second down and five from the 18 from the right hash. Osman with his man Harbin motion. And the give and the ball is uh -oh. loose and picked up and fumbled. Fumbled loose, and they will never get Cameron Dyson, who's headed to the house. Touchdown, Tigers. We were just talking about how Fordson's been beating themselves all night. They had a turnover on their first drive. Once again, they're driving. They're pretty much in the red zone, and that happens. That is absolutely soul-crushing. Two turnovers that turn into points as we get another look Come at this. On, what happened, Stick? Uh, it looks like the handoff exchange was never good. I don't know if he was pulling the ball early or you know, if just the handoff wasn't really there. But man, my goodness, what a defensive play. Sometimes when that ball bounces right up to you, you can't believe it because you know footballs are oblong and they bounce all over the place. When it comes up to you like that and it's a gift, you run it all the way down the field. We'll get another look after this extra point attempt to that replay. But how about the play? Johnny on the spot and the athleticism of the future Division I footballer, Cameron Dyson. Here comes the extra point attempt. The kick is up and the kick is good by Braden Lane. Snap from Hurst, hold from Rapley. And just like that, it's 14 0 thanks to a fortuitous defense and forcing turnovers. We'll take a timeout. We're back to Dearborn Fordson after this on the prep. 14 0. Belleville over the tractors. What rhymes with great? Participate. Where does greatness start? Here, in the classroom. On the diamond. In the pool. On the field. Where will your greatness take you? To better grades. To more friends. Yeah! Be great. Participate. <laughs> Approximately a 80-yard return for a touchdown by number 11 for Belleville, one of their best athletes, Cameron Dyson, who was moved today from his uh, linebacker spot really down to that DN spot. He, they had to move him around, but 
This is a senior, a really good looking athlete, 6'3", 215, and he makes a big time play for the touchdown. Don't you love that? You know, you're playing out of position and you get to make a big play like that. It, it always makes you feel good as an athlete because, you know, it's new, it's something you're trying, and then all of a sudden, boom, you're the hero. I love it. Yeah, very nice. He's considering both Western Michigan and Buffalo, by the way. Go to Western. Well, <laughs> Well, there's some folks in this press box who won't argue with that. <laughs> we like the Broncos. And there's some folks in this press box who will argue with that. That's all right. You can't go wrong either way. No. Great institutions. Yeah. Just always love to keep the great athletes in the state. Yeah. Ali Hadi, a boo from the back row. I don't know what your boo's for. Where'd you go? <laughs> Oakland? You don't have a football team. <laughs> You're not in the discussion, partner. All right, we're underway. 14-0, the Tigers of Belleville. Fortune not done, but this is an important drive stick. This is drive number three for them, and it might be their last time they touch the football before the half. What do you want to see from them? I, I need to see them respond here. I would love to see a big play. That's what they really need right now, some momentum shift or something to get them sparked, but that's not really how their offense is built. So you're going to see them do what they've been doing this first couple drives is matriculate all the way down the field and hopefully cash it in this time. Nothing yet for Antonio Gates in this game. Is there any way that you can implement him in your somehow, or you just keep using him as a decoy? You know, at some point, kind of like Calvin Johnson, you just got to try, right? Just throw it up to him, let him use his athleticism. It's a little risky right now, though. You, you probably feel more comfortable doing that earlier in the game when you're not down 14, because if you accidentally throw an interception, now you're really in the weeds. Yeah. But you got to give your athlete a chance. All right, let's see what we got here. Forts and football from the 32-yard line. Fort's an offense that has uh, put up some gaudy numbers this year and has much improved. They put up 38 in week one over Canton. There's a short pass. It's caught. There it is. Antonio Gates Jr. They do get him involved, but it's a grand total of two yards for the senior star wide receiver who's committed to Michigan State. Yeah, you like that play. And if Saeed could have kept his block a little longer, I think this could have turned into a big play. See, he has him. Uh, he didn't want to hold, so I get it. He let him go, but... If he could have held that block a little longer, he had some blockers out in front of him. It's a Forts and offense is putting up 43 points a game. They have yet to score tonight. And give credit to, you know, the Belleville defense. Turnovers no are kind of unpredictable, but when you're forcing them, you got to give credit to the defense. No doubt. Osman handoff up the middle and the give is to the fellow who fumbled the football the last time he got it. He holds on this time to Hussein Beydoun. Gain of a couple, it's third and long with a running clock and five minutes left. That's a big third down right now. Big third down. You've got to keep this drive going. You do not want to give Belleville the ball back with about five minutes left in the quarter. Yes, sir. Big play here for the quarterback. Mr. Osman, Alex Osman, the senior, 3.7 student, kid that wants to play next year, keep playing college football. He's best friends with Muhammad Zaban, the weak side linebacker, and Walker Zaban's son. And uh, Mike Osman and Walker Zaban are great friends. It's a good father son story between those four. Four minutes and 17 seconds left. Big third and five for the senior Osmond and the tractors. Antonio Gates got a pass, caught out of a spin on his feet to the 40, to the 30, makes a move with the 20, could go all the way. He's at the 15, 10, five, touchdown, tractor. Big time play, 62 yard touchdown, all oh, on his own. Antonio Gates Jr. I don't even know what it. my favorite part of that catch was. Was it the one handed catch? Was it the spin out of the tackle? Was it cutting across the entire football field to cut down the angles of the defenders? Was it juking their last free safety? Was it getting it? Like all of it was fantastic. And it's exactly what they said they needed. They needed a quick score. They needed to get into the end zone. They needed something to bring the momentum back. And you heard the crowd. And look at, look at, we told you he was the emotional leader early in the game. Clearly the emotional leader now. Antonio Gates Jr., the top wide receiver, and he's his own man. He's a self-made man and a guy that is a workout warrior. Nobody works harder 
than Antonio Gates Jr. Here comes the extra point by Hattie Saad. And that is off the crossbar, no good. Saad has been working with an injured plant leg and uh, he misses that one. But on the board and back in it emotionally and in reality is Fortson off the big strike from Antonio Gates Jr. You asked for it, we talked about it. And Fortson found a way to get him going. Yeah, and that's what they did. Two consecutive plays feeding him, and you like that. The first play was a short pass. Second play, kind of a little hitch and go, so he gets behind his defender and, you know, use him and keep using him often. I don't know exactly why they didn't use him the first quarter and a half, but as you can see, I mean, let's watch this play again. It's absolutely beautiful. Little hitch there. He's behind the defense. One-handed catch. Spins off the defender. Makes another move. And these are guys that are like the Division One players. Right. I mean, he's not doing it against a scrub defense. Yeah, this I tore an ACL just outing. watching this. <laughs> <laughs> and let's give credit to the coaching and the offensive coordinator, Osama Abdul Hassan, an 04 grad, a captain on the Hoops team, and uh, head coach of the basketball team here at Fordson. Knew he needed to get his leader involved, got him involved, found a way. Smart credit, the, smart, credit the coaching staff. And this Belleville defense, which has been light out, finally gets scored on. They've been really good too. They gave up just seven points in their opener to Plymouth. Shut out Dearborn, the rival here for the Trackers. They did give up 28 in their only loss of the season to Churchill, and then shut out Stevenson last week. So two shutouts, seven points, and then the boo-boo against Churchill. Here we go. Hattie Saad, who missed that extra point, put an asterisk next to that one is going to kick this thing into the end zone, and that will put this ball <laughs> at the 25-yard line. So here comes Belleville now on this drive, and they took one in the chest, and so now they might get a little antsy on this drive. What do you want to see from uh, their offense? Well, the interesting thing is the Fordson defense has hardly been on the field at all in this first half, so they're well-rested, they're ready to go, and on the other side of the ball, you know, the, the Belleville defense has been out there the entire time. But what you're looking for out of Belleville is the same thing we were kind of looking for out of the tractors. You need to respond when you're scored upon, only they're not in such dire straits, obviously still having that eight-point lead. That extra point, we're gonna see if that plays a major factor in this game moving forward. Because now, Tractor score again, they gotta go for two. So Belleville takes over at their 20. Apologize, I said the 25. Four minutes left. Underwood, who has been very efficient tonight. Underwood passing the football is uh, five of six in this game for 82 yards and a touchdown. The handoff is to Pitchford off the right side, and he's got a couple. Interesting, you kind of feel just like the momentum has definitely shifted. It, it, it's now just kind of even, I feel. Check that, it's number 35. That's Kobe Reed, a lightly used sophomore. They just keep pumping out running backs at this school. Yeah, well, what would you say? They had like six or seven on their roster. I mean, and they're all solid running backs, too. Yeah. And that's what we were talking about. Sometimes, you know, you just need that opportunity to shine. Pitch for Beasley. I mean, to start the year, you had Alexander, Rouser as well. A lot of depth. They like it. And this is the sophomore again trying the left side. A very conservative approach for Coach Jermaine Crowell in his seventh season. I like that play by number six, Smith, there. It's not going to go down in the stat sheet. You're never really going to get credit for it, but he's the one who turned the running back inside to his buddies, and they were able to make the tackle. It, it, like I said, it won't go on the stat sheet, but that was an important seal there that he got on the end. Yep. So two carries in this drive for Colby Reed. Again, that's part of the inactives and the injury problems for Belleville. They're without an Arkansas commit and a Michigan commit in that backfield. Underwood in the shotgun and a third and four from his own 26 in the left hash in the second quarter. Blitz. Play action. Steps up, got a man incomplete and nearly picked. All over it was 
the tractor defense. I was going to say, all over it was three guys. I mean, <laughs> Antonio Gates Jr. is one of them, but that was a risky throw right there, and you're going to expect that out of your freshman every once in a while to make a decision like that. He was just trying to make a play, but throwing across your body while you're running to your right, good things rarely happen unless your name's Patrick Mahomes. Now take a, take a look at the punt returner for Fordson. That's Muhammad Syed. He's back deep. He's lingering a bit. And he's uh, might have tweaked that hamstring. Yeah, he's tapping it right now. Yeah, he's been gingerly, and that's a key player. So take a note of that. Belleville going to punt it. From their own 15-yard line, it's a low kick, and it's going to hit at midfield and roll for the Tigers. So the punt by Andriana. And with 2.13 to go, the Tractors have a chance now to come back and tie this baby up before halftime. That was a big stop for them right there. A three and out is not something you see out of the Belleville offense often. But right now, like you said, Fortson, even though they're down on the scoreboard, they've controlled this game. Yes, they have. And to your point, Chad, 24, Saeed was limping off the field there. Gonna keep an eye on him on the sidelines. So he's fighting to get on that field, isn't he? Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, he's a warrior. <laughs> oh, boy. There he is. Fordson trying for their 15th straight winning season. Jeff Stergalis gave way to his defensive coordinator, Walker Zabat. And uh, it's been here for 14 years and doing a great job. Osmond rolling right, got a man caught at the 47 yard line. Great catch going down. And that's the Swiss Army knife and Ahmed Harb with two minutes left until halftime with a great catch. Yeah, good comeback route there. Picks up five yards, puts you in a manageable down and distance, keeps the chains, uh, you know, relatively easy to overcome. Under two minutes now. Timeout situation, I believe. There are three timeouts remaining for the tractors. Not sure about that. Clock running, minute and a half left. Osmond on a second and six in his own territory. Gates to his right, has the lone touchdown, a 62-yarder last series. Handoff, Covington, right side, 45-50, and out of bounds into Tiger territory at the 48. Yeah, we're gonna see where they mark him out. This could be a first down, about a yard short. But that was the same play they had a nice run on uh, again. And as you see, Belleville blitzing from the top. And what did they do? They ran away from the blitz. You run the quarterback in as interference. And those blitzers just kind of take themselves out of the play. So a nice play. Third and one. Fortson's got to convert this. I mean, they got a good chance here to go into halftime feeling really good about themselves. Yes, sir. Third and one, a lot of things in the playbook you could do here. Osmond, a, a smart quarterback, seasoned. You could do a few extra things with him maybe than most. Been in the system a couple years, father's a coach. We'll see what they come up with here on a third and one. Osmond gives, has a first down to Covington, up across the 40, down to the 31 yard line and runs over the defender. And something to say. To <laughs> I'm sitting here clapping back. with the fans because that's how you finish a run. You don't look to get out of bounds. You plant your left foot, get to the outside, and you deliver the punishment. Woo. Joyke Bell, who's on the Woodward Sports Network, talks about that all the time. Like, he wanted to be the one to inflict pain. He yeah. didn't want to keep taking hits. He wanted to deliver them, and that's exactly what happened on that play. That was impressive. From a 5'9", 160-pound running back in Lennard, Covington, Osmond wants to throw it, out route, caught, and out of bounds, smart, clock stops with 56 seconds left. Catch made by the leading receiver tonight, Mohamed Saeed. And we're keeping an eye on him because we saw him limping, kind of tapping his right hamstring, but he looks fine now. Maybe it was just a little cramp that he got, drank some uh, fluids on the sideline, was able to get back out there. But you could tell he is the heart and soul of this team right now. 8 of 10 for 150 yards for Osmond in this first half. Oh, good. Strong right. effort. A lot coming to that 62-yard strike from Gates. My high school fantasy team looks good. <laughs> he took Osmond <laughs> up. 
Alex Osmond, not a big, not a bad selection. K L A A, Kensington Lakes Area Associ Area Association. Yes, <laughs> nailed it. You know what I love about this shot that we're looking at right now? The people sitting on the porch in the background able to watch a high school football game. That's what I love about high school football. It's like Wrigley. Oh, it's know? amazing. Where these, I wonder if anybody's on the roof. Who's got the best spot out there? That's where I would be. But, you know, <laughs> just to have that type of hometown atmosphere here at yeah. Fordson, what, a, what an amazing sight. Coming up at halftime, we'll take a look at our top ten plays from week four. There were a lot of good plays last week. A lot of great plays in our game with uh, – Macomb, Dakota, who pulled the upset against our number one team last week, Chippewa Valley. But uh, Fort's in number four in Scott Bernstein's poll. Um, you got two teams going at it, Division One. This is a preview of what these two teams could face potentially down the road in the playoffs. Yeah, and you could feel that intensity before the games. I think both these teams realize how big this game is tonight, not only for their momentum, but just showing them how to do it moving forward, too. No doubt. Don't forget, next week we'll be at Orchard Lake St. Mary's for Orchard Lake St. Mary's and Brother Rice. Big rivalry game there. Joey Radio, who we'll hear from half at halftime. We'll talk to Coach Zaban. A brother Rice grad, you and I, of course, St. Mary's grads. So we'll, oh, have, we'll, all right. we'll have some trash talking going on. Yeah, there should be a nice little friendly uh, gentleman's wager going on. Yep. Maybe put Joey out on Woodward in, a, in his boxer shorts or something. <laughs> we'll have to think about that one. 56 ticks left. Forts and trying to tie this thing up. Alex Osmond going to go deep to the end zone to get down. Tractors. 26 yard strike from Alex to Antonio. There was a lot of hand fighting going on on that. I'm glad the officials just let it go because both players were doing it. And at the end, Gates ends up with the touchdown. And what a game he's having. And actually, what a past four minutes he's having. How about a guy that just threw it up? I mean, this is a beautiful strike. Got both feet in. The rhythm that Osmond and Gates have, they built this and they've worked on this, and you can tell they've got some synergies going tonight. Well, they're, you think they're going for two? They are, and what would you call here? That's the interesting thing. Roughing the passer, I believe, is the call. So that on the two-point conversion is key. So they'll get it, moves from, it from one. Two. That's right. Okay. But how about Antonio Gates? I mean, he was about 10 yards away from that ball. And you talk about guys that have closing explosive speed. My goodness. Okay, the two-point conversion. Osmond under center. Handoff give. Is he in? No He's signal. Him marking him short. They are going to mark him short. I thought he got in. No official call. Yep, they are going to say no good. All right, so with 50 seconds left... A failed extra point and a failed two-point conversion has the score 14 to 12. As we take a look at that last drive, there's a lot of beef on the field for that play right there. Here's the replay. We'll see if we can get in here. Contact early. I can't tell if his knee's down or not. That's a tough call, but the side official had a really good look at it, and he came down the line saying, no, he's about six inches short. So that leaves us with a two-point deficit for Fordson. 50 seconds left in the second quarter, and obviously going into halftime after that. We're now, I think if you're in the halftime locker room, both teams are going to be able to feel decent about each other. It's tough to tell if his knee was down or not. And these officials have a rough job sometimes. I would not know what to call on that play. It was a five-play, 58-yard drive. It took a minute, 23 seconds. And it was a 23-yard touchdown pass to Antonio Gates, Jr. He has three catches now, 89 yards, and two touchdowns. Let's take another look at this again. Yeah, here's kind of down the line. We're going to see if he gets in. Obviously, contact three yards deep. I don't know if the ball ever crosses. Baydoon, the ball carrier. Here comes the kickoff left to right. This is Hattie Saad, who had a 38-yard field goal against Franklin earlier this year. He'll kick it from the left hash, and this thing is going to be returnable for Belleville. Here come the Tigers. 
Uh oh. And it's taken up the right side, bounces outside. This is uh, Shadi Wilson, and he takes it up to about the 30 yard line. So 41 seconds left. If you're the Tigers, you got the potency to take a bite out of somebody within this time frame, don't you? I mean, I think you do. You know, your, your team puts up so many points throughout the entire season. You gotta trust your offense here to get you back in or on top of this game even more going into halftime, feeling really good about yourself. If I'm the coach, I'm airing it out at least once, at least once. Sure. Or, you know, do the old, all right, we'll do a little draw play. If it picks up 15, then we'll take it serious. If it picks up zero, yeah, we'll go into halftime. Yep. We've seen that a couple times this year where it, it, it seemed like they were going to be conservative, and then, oh, things have changed. So Underwood, the quarterback, he has led a nice aerial attack, five of seven in the game. And he is uh, thrown for 82 yards from the right hash. Looking downfield, looking deep, and this is thrown out of bounds. Nowhere to go on the different page than the intended receiver across the way. And that's a guy we uh, have not heard much from, Jeremiah Caldwell, a guy that's deciding between Michigan and Tennessee. Tough decisions right there. Uh, but yeah, that play, just a miscommunication. Quarterback thinking fly route, receiver thinking hook route, and uh, quarterback threw the fly. Belleville beat Fordson 69 to nothing last year. A little better game this year so far, Chad. Not what we're seeing this year, <laughs> not what we expected this year. Right. Yester last year was a funky year. Safe to say, Fordson's back. And Belleville really trying to stay hot on the road. The throw left side, Pitchford across the 40. He's out of bounds, it's a first down. The clock will stop with 27 seconds left. Are they giving him the first? They yep. are going to give him the first. Yep. One timeout for Belleville now as they're at the 40 yard line, their own. Starting to cool off, starting to feel like fall. The prep crew wearing their hoodies. Uh, I thought, I guess none of them are. Where are the hoodies? It's hoodie season, boys and girls. Oh, Jamie, you got your hoodie. It's around your waist, girl. Come on. Back to pass Underwood. Throws left side. Got a man caught out of bounds of the 50. It's another first down. And this time he finds Tyree Lockett, the brother of the Michigan State receiver. Mr. Lockett. They're calling him just short. It's going to be uh, second and one, looks like. 22 seconds left. I was with you though. I thought he I thought he was past the 50. Yeah. Tyree Lockett, whose name we call for the first time tonight. His nickname is Minnesota. That's where he's from. Oh, okay. I was gonna ask if there was any significance, but that's uh, pretty easy. From his own 49, the 14 year old Underwood. Looked really smooth tonight. Gonna step up and lost the football. Ball's loose and out at the 50. Who has the football? Fordson says they do, but the officials say no. Looks like Underwood was able to get back on top of it. No official call yet. And it is Belleville football. The clock stops with 14 seconds left. Belleville with just one timeout. And the clock should be running. Or so Fordson thinks. They call timeout. They call for the clock to stop. <laughs> Now the rest call timeout to discuss the play and then we got a legit timeout. <laughs> Can you tell it's heated? Can you tell it's hot? The fans are into the game. Let's take another look at this thing. How did it come out, Stick? Uh, just a little strip right there. It was able to hit the elbow. Number 16 was able to hit his elbow on the way by and force the ball out, but great athleticism by the quarterback able to get back on it. So Bryce Underwood, good job. So, first and 10 from the 50 yard line, did they give him the first down on that fumble forward? They did. Yeah, they gained about a yard on that fumble. Just enough to get it. This will be a good look at it, see if he touches his elbow on the way by. Yeah, looks like Trabulsi got him from behind, like you said, and yeah. then almost, but how about the recovery by Underwood to get back on his own fumble? Yeah, between three Fordson yeah. defenders and then fight to hold on to that ball. So when you get in those piles, 
Things happen. That's Good all look. I'm saying. Yeah. <laughs> Things happen. Uh, yes, we've shared stories about Biles. <laughs> Three to the left, one to the right. Underwood in the shotgun. And the sophomore to his right, Colby Reed. Steps up into the pocket, gonna run. Has four or five speed, has the 40. Gonna bounce it outside, get out of bounds at the 38. With five seconds left, that's a 14 year old who knew to get out of bounds quick after he picked up a healthy gain in a first down. Not only knew, was able to. Yeah, <laughs> like, right. Like, I, I'm out there, I know to get out of bounds. I do not have the athleticism to do so. <laughs> so the fact that he can pull off both of those, and now, you know, you give yourself a chance for a Hail Mary here. Underwood is replacing a four-year starter that has a, a record of 132 touchdowns in uh, Dewey Reed, who graduated a year ago. Timeout on the field. Fortson with a timeout, five seconds left until halftime. And Fortson had five DBs beyond the 10 yard line, just kind of hanging back there. So Antonio Gates Jr. is one of them. I would anticipate him playing some defense because we saw what happens when you play to sack the quarterback on these Hail Marys. If you're a Lions fan, you know exactly what you want to do. You need to bat this ball now. Yep. There was a touchdown, I believe, in the, was it college football or NFL Hail Mary? It's starting to become a perfected science. A guy jumps up and bats it. And I mean, it's really become, you know, back in the day, it was about a 90, uh, about a 1% chance. Yeah, it was more based on luck. Now they actually yeah. draw up the plays and have, you know, one wide receiver facing the other so they can bat it to each other. And yeah, they really put the science into it now, which makes it more fun. But as a Lions fan, as you know, uh, we haven't seen too many of the good side of those. Uh, oh boy. Yeah, you mentioned the Leos, didn't you? Yeah. All right. Yeah, well, Aaron Rodgers took care of us last week. Oh, boy. <laughs> Not that I'm bitter. Time. Not that I'm bitter. <laughs> hey, our quarterback has better hair. That's true. Is that fair? Yeah. And our insurance. Five, <laughs> five seconds left from the 38, and we got a pre-snap penalty. Or did we get another timeout? It looked like a false start. I don't think five yards is even going to matter much here. But that was interesting. They weren't going for the Hail Mary. It was more of kind of like a wide receiver screen on the outside, put two blockers out in front of them. Yes. Setting up perhaps a double pass? Uh, maybe. I don't know if I would risk that at halftime, though, to be honest with you. The double pass or... You know, where you keep throwing it backwards, those laterals trying to move it forward. Yeah. Because if the defense picks it up and goes into halftime and now you're losing, you're feeling really bad. That's right. Don't go anywhere at halftime. We'll talk with head coach Walker Zaban. Joey Radio on the sidelines. Five seconds left, though. Don't go anywhere. Underwood in the shotgun. Throws it right side and knocked down. Antonio Gates Jr. takes down. Deshaun Lee to end the first half, and Lee is down on the green tractor turf. Yeah, you never like to see any kid get hurt or on the ground, but Antonio Gates learned from what they were doing on the play that they didn't run. I mean, he, we said it was going to be a wide receiver screen. He saw it on that last play and knew what they were doing. No targeting either. Right? It didn't seem no. like a target. It was a shoulder into as we get a look at it. That was a running start and a hard shoulder. Oh, and so the players are talking. And uh, yeah, that is, uh, that's an interesting way to go to halftime. We're gonna go down to the field and talk to Joey Radio, who's down with uh, head coach of Dearborn Fordson, Walker Zabat. Joey? Hey, it is Joey, and we are live right now with legendary coach here at Fortson. Coach Zabon, what was it from the start of this game, down 14-0, now being down two at halftime, what was it that you saw on your team? Well, you know, they never quit, you know. Um, two big mistakes that we had, and then they converted three, uh, third and long. You know, you got to give them credit. They did a great job, you know. They really did do a great job, but, um, you know, I'm, I'm just happy that the kids didn't quit and they believed and they kept coming and playing. What is it that you want to see out of your team coming out this second half? Because, honestly, I feel like momentum's in your side right now. Same thing. Well, we got to play another half, you know, and they're a very talented team, well coached team, so we have our hands full. Your thoughts on that hit to, as it took us to halftime? Well, it's a great way to end the, uh, the half. Uh, you know, I don't think they, uh, I don't know. Looks like they're trying to make a call or something or convene, but 
uh, hopefully uh, everything will be okay with the kid and you know what's going on. Good luck, Coach Fouad Zaban. Good luck, second half. We hope he is okay. He is still down, I just see right now, behind all of these players. But back to you guys. Second half here coming up shortly with Woodward Sports and Planet Fitness. Thank you very much, Joey Radio. We appreciate that. Great report down there with 15-year uh, head coach, Fuad Walker Zaban. His team coming back. They're down just a couple points. They were once down a couple touchdowns. We're back on the Friday Night Clash with a recap of the first half and the top 10 plays from last week right after this. Don't ride the bike of shame. Get tons of equipment and free fitness training. Join today for just $10 a month. Make sure you download the Woodward Sports app in the App Store and the Google Play Store today. Take Woodward Sports with you wherever you go and listen live on your phone or mobile device. of Michigan student athletes, the Student Advisory Council's role is to convey the message of how high school sports are supposed to be played. We are responsible for helping the MHSAA maintain a positive and healthy atmosphere so that the interscholastic athletes may thrive. We believe athletes should be competitive, sportsmanlike, and excel academically. We believe students in the stands should have fun, but not take the focus away from the game. We believe coaches should act as teachers. Helping student athletes develop while still keeping high school sports in perspective. We believe that parents should always be positive role models and be supportive of their child's decisions. We believe officials commit their own time to high school sports. And respect should always be shown and given to them. The most important goal for student athletes is to enjoy high school sports while keeping a high level of respect between all those involved in the games. Enjoy the game! Fourth and nine, looking, end zone, right side, caught, touchdown, Dakota! Owen Popar, and we're an extra point away from being tied in the goal. Play action. Looking right, hitch and go, right side, caught! Inside the 10, down to the 8. Maddox, El Tiburano. Back to pass over the middle, pass is intercepted. Picked off. Picked off by Ernat. Ernat up the right sideline and out of bounds at the 20. But Hamby's been picked, and Chippewa has momentum with 3.49 to go until halftime. One of the best in our state. Handoff up the middle. Harris could go. Five yard, 3 2 1 touchdown. 28 yard touchdown run for Cephas Trey Harris. Third and 10 from the 35. One timeout left. Schuster over the middle, intercepted! Picked off! Intercepted by Mata! He's running to the crowd. He's running to the crowd. They're jumping into the stands. Please do some crowd surfing. <laughs> Sloan up the middle, has a first out of the 20, pops a tackle, outside, 10, 5, touchdown Cougars! 29 yard touchdown! And Sloan is crossed, two bills. And off Sloan, breaks a tackle, up the middle of the field, makes a cut at the 40, to the 35. Outside needs one man to beat at the 10 and out of bounds. <laughs> 
punting time. It's fourth and eight. And Dakota down a touchdown. Going to boot this thing away. Watch the fake. Yeah. This is an area where you fake, you know. Aiden Mata, the punter, stands at his own 25. And it is a fake. And it is a first down and more. Slowed across the 40 to the 33-yard line. And my partner is a prophet. <laughs> Great call, buddy. Nine oh seven left in the first. Dakota in the four wide receivers set on third and four over the middle. Pass is nearly intercepted, but caught. Williams inside the five, down inside the end zone. Touchdown, Dakota. <laughs> Quest Williams to the house. On a pass that looked like it was going the other way to the house, Quest Williams finds the destination. Ryan Schuster from the right hash from the 30 yard line. Gonna hand off to Harris. Gonna bounce it outside to the 35 40. Watch out. Down the right side line to the 50. Could go on the first play of scrimmage. 70 yards to the house. His 11th touchdown of the year on play one from the 30, and the hush from the home sideline it is telling tonight. What rhymes with great? Participate. Where does greatness start? Here, in the classroom. On the diamond. In the pool. On the field. Where will your greatness take you? To better grades. To more friends. Yeah! Be great. Participate! <laughs> well, we've got a tight one as expected when you get two top six teams battling in Division I. And on our Friday night clash, Belleville and the home team, Dearborn Forts, and haven't disappointed stick. It's 14 to 12. Belleville raced out early, but you knew Fortson was going to come back and fight. I didn't know. Uh, I'm glad they did because it made it an interesting game. But no, Fortson was on the ropes there. Uh, if, if Belleville would have jumped out to that 14-point lead or would have piled on any more before, because those turnovers were absolutely killer for Fortson in the first half. But like you said, they were able to bounce back. They started using Antonio Gates Jr. a lot, and it paid off the last five minutes of the first half. Yeah, it sure did. Let's get to the highlights and, and look and see how this thing got started. Belleville got on the board first, and uh, they did it through the air. Young Mr. Underwood went to his top target in the first half, Deshaun Lee. And a beautiful play there, a beautiful play call, beautiful throw, 24-yard uh, touchdown reception, nice little corner route. And that's how you want to kick off the game for Belleville. And then this is sort of an unforced turnover. It pops up, and, and, and this was something that Belleville took advantage of. Give, Cam, give Cameron Dyson some credit. Yeah, I'd give him all the credit in the world, and that's the touchdown you dream of right there. The ball just pops up right in your breadbasket. You're able to run, all, what was it, 77 yards and score a touchdown. Yeah, and then you talked about it. Hey, look, we got to get Gates involved. Okay, no problem. This is all Antonio Gates Jr. headed to Michigan State. I'm just happy I was here to witness this play. <laughs> like, that was amazing to watch from up here in the press box. I did not think he was going to catch the initial, the initial pass, but one-handed. And then here, his second touchdown. They allowed some hand fighting, but he was able to secure the touchdown. Down by two. Ten touchdowns on the year. He's averaging two touchdowns a game. He's right on point. Antonio Gates. The extra point was no good on the first touchdown. The two-point conversion was no good on the second. But we know we've got a tight battle. Stick, it's a fun one. We're glad we're here. Uh, how did the kick for cash go, I want to know? Well, last week after we gave away $10,000 to a Dakota student and Dakota, which we do every single week with the Friday Night Clash with Woodward Sports, uh, all you have to do is kick a 20-yarder, a 30-yarder, and a 45-yard field goal. We pull random people out of the stands if they're following Woodward Sports on social media. Last week, the kid kicked all three, won $10,000. This week... Wah, wah, didn't even make the 20 yarder. <laughs> so it's uh, it was an interesting kick this 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 halftime. And there are a lot of kickers here. Uh, Fortson is a soccer school. We saw their game uh, yesterday. Well, they're uh, they're not only a soccer school. Stop it, Ollie. 
He's got cousins here he's talking trash to. They're a football school, but they have a great soccer program. They won 8 nothing on a, a wipeout in the first half that we saw the other day. I'm surprised you didn't get dinged for 10 Gs again, bud. Hey, you know, we want to <laughs> give it away. Like, that's the fun. Watching that kid win that money last week, running around the field, jumping into the student section. I mean, what a huge moment in any young man. I mean, that'd be a huge moment in my life, and I'm not a young man. Winning $5,000 for myself, like... I got some I got some things I'd spend that money on. But yeah, it's exciting to do it. We do it every game that we're at. And uh, Orchard Lake St. Mary's Brother Rice next week, we'll have, someone will have a chance to kick for $10,000 again. Speaking of Orchard Lake St. Mary's uh, and Brother Rice, we have a halftime score from Molesky Field at Orchard Lake, and it's uh, Warren De La Salle, the number one team in Division II, 21. Orchard Lake St. Mary's uh, 13 at halftime. We thank you for that. Another score, Sterling Heights Stevenson 21, Macomb Dakota 10, and that's going on in the third quarter. We'll get you caught up on some other scores down the line. We'll take a timeout from Dearborn Fordson, where we've got a dandy and a tight one, but right now it's the Tigers by two. We're back to Charles Justice Field in a moment. All right, this is Adam, take two. Mark? I guess. <laughs> I go like this. <laughs> The best part about playing football in Texas has to be the reaction from the community. I want to encourage others to play volleyball or choir because you get to experience new things and do stuff that you've never done before. My reason why is passion. My reason why is pride. The voice of Michigan student athletes, the Student Advisory Council's role is to convey the message of how high school sports are supposed to be played. We are responsible for helping the MHSAA maintain a positive and healthy atmosphere so that interscholastic athletes may thrive. We believe athletes should be competitive, sportsmanlike, and excel academically. We believe students in the stand should have fun, but not take the focus away from the game. We believe coaches should act as teachers. Helping student athletes develop while still keeping high school sports in perspective. We believe that parents should always be positive role models. And be supportive of their child's decisions. We believe officials commit their own time to high school sports. And respect should always be shown and given to them. The most important goal for student athletes is to enjoy high school sports. While keeping a high level of respect between all those involved in the games. Enjoy the game! Don't ride the bike of shame. Get tons of equipment and free fitness training. Join today for just $10 a month. Dearborn Fortson trying to stay undefeated at home. They trail by two right now. My name's Chad Bush alongside Sam Stick Day, Joey Namu, otherwise known as Joey Radio on the sidelines. We appreciate it. And uh, it feels like home in Fortson. We both have friends in this area. We both have some ties. I don't have the ties you have, though. This is like real blood. You have family that went to Forts, and tell us about that. Yeah, my grandfather actually graduated from Forts in, in 1938. Wow. So if we were able to find an old yearbook, I would absolutely love and adore that. But when we found out we were doing the game here, I have never actually been to Forts. And so when you pull up and you see they're still in the same building that my grandfather went to, you know, he walked the same halls that these kids are walking, maybe sat in the same classroom. It's uh, you know, it's kind of like a goosebump moment for you because it's it's a family lineage, and he used to tell me about Fordson, and he would still follow them in the newspaper back in the day and follow all their scores. So I'm sure he would love watching this right now. Unfortunately, you know, he passed away about 15 years ago. But what was his name? Uh, Kenneth Qualls was his name. So all right. I tried to do some like classmate search and stuff like that before the games to see if I could pull up some old pictures or find the yearbook or whatever. But yeah, very special for me to be here just because. I'm looking at a building my grandfather walked yeah. in when he was 13, 14, 15, and 16, and I would love to meet him at that age now, just, you know, just to kind of talk to him and see what kind of man he was going to be. He worked for Ford. He was a tool and die guy, yeah. you know, hard worker, and, you know, just all-American story. I like that a lot. It, there's quite a bit of history here, your grandfather a part of it. This is a 15-acre campus, and when they completed it not too long before your grandfather started high school in 1928, uh, it was named for Henry Ford and his son, 
Edsel Ford, yep. Ford's son. Okay. And that's how this school came up with a name. And, uh, you know, this is a, a, one of the biggest schools in our state, but, but you talked about it, the history here, and, and you look across the way and been to some of the schools around the state that have this history to them, and Fortson's done a great job. We also want to thank all the great supporters for this broadcast uh, at Dearborn Fortson, who's helped us quite a bit. Jeff Del Judas, who's been wonderful. Jeff's the athletic director here. He's also the commissioner of the KLAA, the league that both these teams play in. And we want to thank him and Fuad Walker Zaban for all they've done to host us as we get set for the second half coming up here in just a couple minutes. We'll come on back in just a minute to Fortson, where we've got a dandy of a second half about to get underway. 14 to 12, Belleville over forts and this is the prep. As the voice of Michigan student athletes, the Student Advisory Council's role is to convey the message of how high school sports are supposed to be played. We are responsible for helping the MHSAA maintain a positive and healthy atmosphere so the interscholastic athletes may thrive. We believe athletes should be competitive, sportsmanlike, and excel academically. We believe students in the stands should have fun. But not take the focus away from the game. We believe coaches should act as teachers. Helping student athletes develop while still keeping high school sports in perspective. We believe that parents should always be positive role models. And be supportive of their child's decisions. We believe officials commit their own time to high school sports. And respect should always be shown and given to them. The most important goal for student athletes is to enjoy high school sports. While keeping a high level of respect between all those involved in the games. Enjoy the game. It's uh, our week two clash. Member Southfield a t they trail Stoney at the break, seven to nothing. Now then, let's get to the statistics here tonight. And uh, look at the first downs. Both teams with seven first downs. And both teams getting it done more so in the air. Rushing yards for Belleville, just uh, a total rushing yards of 21 on 13 carries. How about that, Stick? I guess that kind of got biased, but how about Fortson's defense holding Belleville to just 21 yards on 13 carries? That's a nice little nugget and something to be said for Fortson on the defensive front. Yeah, Fortson, but honestly, Fortson didn't spend that much time on defense. You know, the, the big turnovers and then the touchdown, so they got the ball back and immediately went on defense for Belleville. And a lot of time of possession was for Fortson in that first half. Sure was. And then you look at the passing, and that's really what this was about. 236 yards passing from the senior Alex Osmond. He's putting up some gaudy numbers. He did it on 9 of 11. And a guy that uh, really has lighted it up, but his top target, Antonio Gates Jr., three catches for 89 yards. It was Saeed in the first quarter, four catches, 70, and it was Gates in the second, three snatches for 89 yards, and oh, two touchdowns. That's all. You look at the other side for Belleville, uh, they did have some guys as well that got some things going. Uh, Underwood, impressive stick, 7 of 10 in the air for 101 yards and a touchdown. Did not turn it over. The two turnovers key in this game, both by the tractors, they are able to overcome and get back in this contest. All right. I'm sorry, partner. Oh, no, that's okay. I was just going to elaborate on the two turnovers and how big they are in this game, plus the two missed extra points. That's looming that's right. large in this game. Yep. Fortson's still in it. We'll look ahead at... Uh, Next week's games for both clubs, three more regular season games scheduled in the KLAA for both these clubs. Of course, they'll have a championship game after both teams are from the east of the Kensington Lakes Athletic Association. And uh, coming up uh, for Belleville next week is Wayne Memorial. Followed by John Glenn and then Lavonia Franklin to close it out. Meanwhile, Fortson, a little bit tougher of a schedule down the stretch. He'll take on Glenn Churchill and their ever heated rival, Dearborn. Get a look at that. 
you know, I'm glad the refs at the, at the end of the second half, or at the end of the first half, they were getting together to decide if that hit by Gates was going to be a penalty. And I'm glad they elected to let that go because that was a clean hit, shoulder down. It's exactly textbook how you want football to be played. Yep. Unfortunately, it resulted in an injury for the young man from Belleville. But I'm glad they didn't get penalized for a clean hit. I agree. The kickoff is underway. Here we go. And it's taken by who else? The do everything guy, number 24, Muhammad Syed. And hopefully he's uh, over from that, his own injury. You saw his hamstring dinged up. Flag on the play. Looks like it could be holding. Belleville 47 and five the last four and a half years. And they took their first league loss in the KLAA two weeks ago to a Livonia Churchill club that really is starting to open some eyes around this league. Very well coached team. Penalty here for Forts and it's gonna set them back a bit. They will start now on their own 18 yard line. What a first half for Alex Osmond, the senior. Six foot, 190 pound quarterback, and he's got aspirations to play at the next level. And from what we've seen in the first half, Stick, I mean, this guy's got some moxie to him, some confidence, and, and he doesn't make many mistakes. No, and that's been the big thing for Forts, and they've been able to go up and down the field. It's just those couple of fumbles and missed the handoff, and outside of that, they've been dominating the ball. Mm hmm. Covington with a handoff, communication in the backfield again. That's been a problem tonight, but Covington bounces it outside and somehow manages to get five on first down. That was a nice run by Covington. He didn't really have anything in front of him. The play wasn't designed uh, to go out to the left, but he planted his foot and was able to make it out there and use his speed to get around the corner and pick up a nice six yards. Solid carry on first down. It, it, first down maybe has been the problem tonight for this Fortson offense. They, they just really haven't been able to get ahead of the sticks. Yeah, really. I mean, really the only problem they've had is the turnovers. Looks like Covington coming off. Was he gimpy? A little bit of a limp. So we'll keep an eye on that. Second and four. Fortson in no rush. Landers in the backfield. I'm in love with that. That's what I was just going to say. <laughs> I love that he's the fullback. 310 pound guard. There's a handoff right side. This is Harb, and Harb is going to get near a first down before he spilled. Tackle made by the linebacker slash running back, Davion Pitchford. Talented backer and running back. We've seen him both sides, and it's going to be third and short. And both these teams are still getting chippy with each other. Still kind of a little extracurricular after each and every play. You can pick out one set of people who've been blocking each other, going at each other, and they're keeping the talking going, the intensity going. I love this. I do too. Full crowd tonight. Both sides. Both sides. Belleville made the nice trip. Forts is one of the biggest schools in the state. I think number six. Glad to be here. We were at... Uh, Three top 10 size schools now, back to back weeks. Osmond in the shotgun, hands off up the middle, has a hole, has some room, has a first down, and a carry all the way up to nearly the 40 yard line. Hussein Beydoun on the carry. And you got to give it up to the big offensive line on that play. That was a massive hole. Landers, Burton, Alzadi, Assad, and Hazimi. What a great, great explosive off the line. Like they pushed the line of scrimmage at least two yards down the field on that. We'll see how adjustments at halftime maybe start to play on this drive two stick. It, it always seems like that first drive, you, you get your chance to, oh, we want to do this. Here comes the adjustment. And then now comes the other adjustment maybe by Belleville. We know both coaches are strategists. And this is where you see the coaching come out because, you know, they've had all halftime to draw up a great series. Yep, got it. First and 10 after the 10 yard gain. And they'll keep with the hot hand. And they'll go right back to Baydoon, the junior running back. And he's got another four yards. They'll set up second and mid. <laughs> a 
Jermaine Crowell, 5-1 versus Dearborn Fordson in the series. Only loss was that 15-16 season, 34-25. Tractors won it. First season these two teams matched with Crowell and Walker going at it. It was back in the 14-15 season. But uh, they know each other well from Division I history in the playoffs before they joined the league. And these two teams have played as rivals regularly for the last 20 years or so. Second and mid. Osmond back to pass. Working against Gate. Out route. Caught at the 48-yard line. 10-yard gain. Three straight 10-yard chunk plays. And Fortson just doing what they want right now. How about this offense? <laughs> that was an NFL route right there by Antonio Gates Jr. Uh, if we have the replay of that, that was absolutely amazing. He literally had three different routes on that one route. He, he went out, he went in, and then he was able to turn the defender and go back outside. Literally, that was an NFL route that I just watched a high school kid do, and that's amazing. That's, that's great coaching, that's great preparation, and that's just great athleticism by Antonio Gates Jr. Tough to defend. Yeah, it really is. It, it, when you have those types of moves, that's a technique and a technician and athleticism all just coming together, isn't it? I mean, yeah. It, One of the fortunately, hardest. I keyed in on, on that play, and I was able to watch it all. Yep, nice stick move to the inside, and, and boy, he can really put his foot in the ground and get open. First and 10, Osmond going to throw left side. Got a man at midfield, going to scoot up across the 45, down to the 40-yard line. And another nice 10-yard gain to a familiar face. They keep going to number 24. He looks healthy. That hammy looks good. That's Muhammad Syed. Good patience there, too. If he would have just rushed ahead, but he waited for his blockers to get out in front of him, read the hole. It's kind of like a zone run scheme out on a bass. Yeah. It, it was a great read. Well blocked. Yeah. These kids are coached very well. You can see that. Clock running, 6.40 left. Second and two. Great situation. Watch Gate to the bottom of your screen. Number seven. Already two touchdowns tonight. And he's got the wide side of the field all to play with, too, right now. Jet sweep fake. Give is up the middle. Give is a first down. Inside the 40, now to the 38. Gain of three, move the chains. That's been a theme on this drive, Stick. Yeah, you're seeing Fortson coming out with a lot of this RPO from the quarterback. Uh, you know, in the first half, we saw it a little bit, but the, you've seen it on consecutive plays. And I, I like it. They're putting the slot receiver in motion. They're uh, offering up a couple options for the defense to select. And let your heady quarterback, who's proven to be very smart, very particular with the ball, make the right decisions. And he is 3.7 student. His dad's one of the coaches, Mike Osmond. A lot of maturity, leadership. A guy that's always smiling. Alex Osmond, very coachable, has waited for this moment, has lived for forts and football. His dad, a former kicker, played back here in the 80s. Osmond swings it right side. And he's got Harb, and he's got Harb for just a few yards. Ahmed Harb, the junior, utility knife guy. He does everything. They like Harb. He can kind of fill in everywhere and running back slot. Sort of one of those guys every team needs. Yeah, and that was a nice play, too, by uh, Belleville's Jeremiah Caldwell coming up and making that play in open space. It's tough when you're one-on-one -on -one with all that green around you to make that tackle, but he broke down, tackled the belly button, and did it the right way. Jeremiah Caldwell, boy, we saw him Tuesday at practice, and he is built like a man. 6'3", 215. I mean, this kid is uh, put together. 6'3", excuse me, 175. Boy, he seems bigger than that. Lennard Covington off the right side. Working behind that line that's been so good for Fords in tonight's stick. Led by number 50, Fayez Alziati. Yeah, and like you said, he's the strongest center that Fordson has ever had. And he shows it on pretty much every play. He is moving his man. Also 73, a big part of that. Getting a block in there. Mohamed Darwish, a senior. It is third and mid, though. 
Yeah, this is two down territory though. So you're, you know, you don't need to pick it up here necessarily. You can run a nice little play to get you two, three yards and keep it manageable on fourth. Yep. Two wide receivers to the right. Or you take your shot at the end zone because you have Antonio Gates Jr. up top one on one coverage. Yep. Looks like one on one coverage. We'll see what happens after the snap. Osman, will he check out of it? Yeah, if I'm Osman, I'm keying on number seven right now for Belvin. Osman's going to turn, give, and Covington's going to get to the 30, but he's going to be two yards short of the first down. And coming up, making that stick is number 21, Charles Wilson, whose name we called tonight lots of times from that strong safety spot. He is fast from that strong safety spot. He closes the distance between him and the running back very quickly and comes up and makes a great play here coming down the line of scrimmage. That is a big play, force and fourth down. But like we said, you knew it was kind of four down territory. So if you're Fordson, you weren't too disappointed in that play right there. Fourth down and two. <laughs> I don't know if you can hear the fans getting chippy with the officials because they're getting chippy on the field. But oh, yeah. the tension is in the air right now. You can feel it. This is a big play for Fordson. Watch the hard count if you're Belleville. Fourth and two from the 30. Tractors down a couple. Osmond trying to lead them. Handoff, give first down, Leonard Covington. Gain of five, he needed two. Move the chains again. That's the fifth first down on this drive for the Tractors. And you were right, they did the hard count. And you know, it, it's interesting because the hard count can work in two ways. They tried it to get them off sides, but it also delays you in pursuing the ball too. So it makes you a little slower off the ball. And on fourth and two, that split second is the only difference that you need. Well timed by Fordson, this offense behind offensive coordinator Osama Abdul Hassan, which really is an offense that no more key offense. Uh, this is get speed and space, spread it out. On the move, the 25. Red zone time for Osman and the tractors, left to right. Play action. Got his man, Muhammad caught at the 20. Tackled immediately by Caldwell, the safety, after a short game. And Andre McDade came in to finish it Ooh, off. Too. Did he ever? <laughs> he wanted to make sure he was felt on that play. McDade got the late start, filling in for an injured Tiger. Let's him know about it at the end a little bit. Sure. Got to remind him. Yeah. Once in a while. That's when you look up, you see number 95, and you put that in the back of your head, like, all right, I got you, 95. As if he wasn't reminded <laughs> when 6'2", 265 drilled him from behind. Well, that's when you look back, you're like, 6'2", okay, maybe I'll forget. Uh-huh, <laughs> uh-huh, we'll forget about it. Approaching 60 seconds left until the fourth quarter will begin. Osman takes the jet sweep, handoff right side, that's Harb. And tackled again by Covington from the safety spot. And a late flag downfield. And this one might go on Forts and center, Fayez Alziati. Yeah, what we were talking, they've been chippy the whole game, talking to each other, and that's fine. That's exactly what you want. But he came in and threw two knees while the kid was on the ground. And next thing you know, I mean, that's, a, that's an easy 15-yard penalty. You've got to be smarter than that. Even if you're frustrated and yeah. you're in the emotions, when they're on the ground, it's it. The play's over, the whistle's blown. You know, we were always taught play through the whistle, not to the whistle. Great run here. But then you see after the play, a little bit of chippiness there. That's okay. I don't mind that. But if we had a replay of what 50 was doing, he, he literally put a knee into this guy on the ground twice. So 15 yards, it's going to hurt. Yeah, it is. Costly penalty. His teammates are not happy with him either. Yeah, and, and that's a guy that's a leader and doesn't make mistakes like that. And credit Belleville for keeping their head, keeping their cool, and avoiding some penalties in these hot moments. Yeah, the only thing that really saved them on that was, was a spot foul, and he was doing it way down here. So it didn't yeah. cost them 15 yards from the line of scrimmage. So they're still capable of picking up a first down. It's not that overwhelming, but... Third and 18 is not where you want to be. Twins to the right, including Gates, along with Saeed. Landers in the backfield. 
Got to try Gates here, right? You'd think so. Third and 18. Osman looking right side, looking for Gates in trouble. Pocket collapses and down he goes. Sacked in the backfield by Big 65. 95 rather, and you called his name, Andre McDade. Yeah, he's made a couple nice plays. Co pocket collapsed, quarterback didn't have anywhere to go. They contained him. 55 comes in, 95, just a great team defense right there. That's a, that's a team sack. Yes, sir. So fourth and 22 from the 37. This is an odd location. Uh, and, and to make a decision now, you'll have to wait until the fourth quarter. Yeah, that's it. We'll wait till the fourth quarter. <laughs> Let's go to the fourth quarter. We'll check in with Joey when we come back. Right now, the same score as you had at halftime. 14 to 12, but here come the tractors. We're back after this on the preps coverage. A Friday Night Clash. Man! Uh-oh! Carmen's falling behind. Let's give her the hiss of shame. Don't ride the bike of shame. Get tons of equipment and free fitness training. Join today for just $10 a month. Make sure you download the Woodward Sports app in the App Store and the Google Play Store today. Take Woodward Sports with you wherever you go and listen live on your phone or mobile device. We're going to go back to Joey after this play on fourth down. It's all right. We'll get there. We'll get back to him in a moment. Right now, it's a fourth and 22 from the 37-yard line. And this is a situation where they like to pooch punt with Osman. Let's see what they do. If I'm Fortson, I'm throwing it up and hoping to get a pass interference call here. I mean, yeah? You know, like, okay. you're not going to punt. I mean, what do you gain, 20 yards if it's a touchback? I don't know. I disagree. 15? I think you punch po pooch punt it here. Really? Okay. Yeah. Fourth and 22 from the 37. It is going to be a play. Osman back to pass and throws, and that is picked off. Picked off, and it won't matter. That's about exactly where the line of scrimmage was. And stopped. Turnover on downs. Or was that an interception? Doesn't matter. <laughs> Belleville has it back. And uh, how about the Tiger defense? after the Tigers got into the red zone. What a heady play by Jeremiah right there. Jeremiah Beasley. <laughs> Just the interception falling into your lap and the turnovers getting Fordson again. I think Joey's ready to go now. You want to check in with Joey? Let's do it. Where are you, Joey? All right, let's go, Joey. And we got to talk to Miss Keith Warlow because I feel like you have the hardest job here keeping this student section good. I love this job. Go Tractor! Hey, and real, what's up, man? That's my little brother right here. Oh, little brother. <laughs> oh, I'm little brother. Okay, well, I'm little brother. Hey, student section, can we make some noise real quick? <laughs> Fourth quarter, here we go. All right, thanks, Joey. Appreciate it. Belleville on the move after the... Did we find out if it's a turnover or on downs, or was it an interception. interception? Was it an interception? Oh, yeah. That okay. was an interception. Interception. I'm not taking that off his stat sheet. <laughs> no, no, no. Hand off up the middle. And uh, four-yard gain on the play. Belleville's been rotating a few backs, and, and they have not had the football yet in this quarter. This is their opening drive for the second half. Underwood threw for 110 yards in the first half, hands off to his sophomore running back. This is Colby Reed, the 5'9", 170-pound tailback, and he's got a nice game for a first down. And Belleville has such a bright future, not only with their freshman quarterback, you're talking sophomore running back right there. It's, it, they just seem to have a pipeline that is being filled constantly. So whatever they're putting in the water in Belleville, I want some of it for my child. I think uh, it'll help them on the football field eventually. Other scores from around uh, the state of Michigan. Rochester Adams 28, Seaholm nothing. 
And Bloomfield Hills 41, Farmington 14. Thank you very much, appreciate that. Underwood hands off, and up the middle, nothing doing there. Ran into a couple of twins, and another twin. <laughs> and while we have a moment, let's talk about the twins. How about it, a defense, excuse me, this isn't the twins, this is the Belleville two offensive tackles. Look at Maurice Johnson, just a sophomore, 6'6", 350. And Nate Johnson, 6'5", 320. Big Maurice is out tonight. He's got an offer from Florida. And Nate Johnson uh, is playing. And, and these two guys, how about it? Two bookends uh, of the future. And you talked about it, just sophomores. Yeah, they're going to keep filling this pipeline. So Belleville, I'm sure we'll be back watching one of their games in a couple years as these teams compete for state championships perennially. Underwood in the shotgun, takes it, gives, and just about a yard or two. Not much running room. Again, a stop up front by Parker. Armand Parker, 55, and Javon Parker, 54. Those are the twins we're talking about. Both incredibly big boys. Muhammad Bazi, a twin, who is playing, but his twin brother is out tonight. He'll probably be back next week, but uh, Hussein Bazi they miss. There's a pass caught for a first down on a nice pitch and catch on the outside. This time, Belleville goes to the outside wide receiver. That's Tyree Lockett, his second catch of the game. Yeah, nice little curl route right in front of the sticks. Pick up the first down, keep the chains moving. That's what Belleville's been really good at when they've had the ball, is keeping those chains moving. You know, they've converted on a couple third and longs early in the first half, and they've been able to convert, and it's just been impressive by the freshman quarterback. Lockett is the brother of Terry Lockett Jr. For Michigan State. How about Michigan State football? Handoff, jet sweep, right side, and... Barreling across the 35 somehow, still on his feet. Nice carry that time by a fresh face that we haven't called tonight, Kevin Sims. Yeah, nice run there too. I mean, there wasn't much there. He was able to, what, pick up just pretty much a couple yards, but still keep him churning. That could have been a tackle for a loss, but he fell forward, and that's what you want to see out of your back. Strong block that time by Colby Reed, another sophomore. <laughs> And that's what we were talking about earlier with all the injuries, all these sophomores, these younger players need to step up and that's exactly what they're doing right now for Belleville. Will they have enough time to recover from those injuries? Come on, we shall find out, under eight minutes to go and we've got a flag or a timeout or both. We'll take it with them, or no, no timeout, I'm sorry. Delay of game. That's a big penalty. Both teams with costly penalties in these drives here lately. Yeah, and if Fortson can luck themselves into a turnover, kind of like Belleville has three times today, that'll be a big momentum shift. Shift, swift shift. We could turn that into one word. Yeah. <laughs> I, I like that. Oh, uh, there we go. I've always wanted to see what's on these signs. You know, sometimes you see like Dwight Schrute on there. You got Yale, the Pirates, Action Now, some blocks, <laughs> Purdue. You love it. Yale upside down. Uh, speaking of language and speaking of signs, uh, Fortson, a lot of their signals, a lot of their calls are in Arabic. And we'll get to more of that later. Underwood back to pass, looking deep, looking end zone, got a man caught inside the five, down to the one. Oh my goodness, a play by the other number seven. That's Christian Rapley, the senior wide receiver. Yeah, Belleville says, we got another number seven on our team too, and he can catch the ball. What an amazing catch, and the DB just never gets his head around on this throw. It, it was a great throw, good way to high point that ball while he's fallen out of bounds, but he just could not turn around. The DB just never got his head around. Rapley, a three-star receiver, offers from Arizona State, Penn State, Tennessee, Minnesota, and Kentucky. 6'1", 200 pounds, and you can see why. Belleville knocking on the door. Underwood in the shotgun, turns, gives. His sophomore tailback is stuffed with seven and a half minutes to go here in the fourth quarter. And the tractor's down two. Belleville really looking to get this thing up two scores. How big would that be? 
huge. And you know, on the other side of the coin, Fordson needs to force a turnover here. They could not let them in the end zone. Hey, if you hold them to a field goal, you're looking okay, but you could not let them score here. There, to me, there's just not enough time left in the game to get up to go down two scores. Yeah. Six straight winning seasons for Jermaine Crowell since he took over in 2014. He inherited a three and six team. And he'll keep his uh, classmate to the right. Underwood rolling right, looking in the end zone, and he overshot Rapley, and he took a pop at the end from one of the Parker twins. <laughs> Just to let him know he's there. You know, that shows a lot of trust in their freshman quarterback for Belleville, though, to let, let him throw the ball on second and three right there from the goal line. You assume they're going to run the ball, but no, you, you trust your quarterback to make the right play. This one sailed on him a little bit, but at the same time, they're trusting their freshman, and I like that. Third and three. A lot of respect for that defensive front for Fordson. Yeah. It's tougher to score. You know everything gets condensed once you get in this red zone, especially inside the five-yard line. That's right. Colby Reed in the shotgun. Gets the handoff left side, flag down, and he won't get in anyway. Let's see what the flag is here. Looks like illegal motion. It is illegal motion, good call. Man, you're like a, a like a penalty. <laughs> like you know every sign, you know the penalty before. You're like, I, well, I like to watch football. I guess so, <laughs> my goodness. That is good, my friend. <laughs> well, thanks for having me. <laughs> this is what I've been doing on my couch for years. And my friend would always say, well, go do that. You should get paid for this. <laughs> right, what are you doing? You're calling the game better than Joe Buck. And like, well, that's not a big deal. <laughs> it's not too Love hard. Love you, Joe Buck. <laughs> oh, I do like Joe Buck, for the record. I know he takes a lot of heat. Um, 6.38 to go, partner. It's a third and three, but what was the flag all about and why haven't they moved to T offense? Uh, this is get speed and space, spread it out. On the move, the 25. Red zone time for Osmond and the tractors, left to right. Play action. Got his man, Muhammad caught at the 20. Tackled immediately by Caldwell, the safety, after a short game. And Andre McDade came in to finish it Ooh, off, too. did he ever. <laughs> he wanted to make sure he was felt on that play. McDade got the late start, filling in for an injured Tiger. Let's him know about it at the end a little bit. Sure, got to remind him. Yeah. Once in a while. That's when you look up, you see number 95, and you put that in the back of your head, like, all right, I got you, 95. As if he wasn't reminded <laughs> when 6'2", 265 drilled him from behind. Well, that's when you look back, you're like, 6'2", okay, maybe I'll forget. Uh-huh, <laughs> uh-huh, we'll forget about it. Approaching 60 seconds left until the fourth quarter will begin. Osman takes the jet sweep, handoff right side, that's Harb. And tackled again by Covington from the safety spot. And a late flag downfield. And this one might go on Forts and center, Faez Alziati. Yeah, what we were talking, they've been chippy the whole game, talking to each other, and that's fine. That's exactly what you want. But he came in and threw two knees while the kid was on the ground. And next thing you know, I mean, that's a, that's an easy 15-yard penalty. You've got to be smarter than that. Even if you're frustrated and yeah. you're in the emotions, when they're on the ground, it's it. The play's over, the whistle's blown. You know, we were always taught play through the whistle, not to the whistle. Great run here. But then you see after the play, a little bit of chippiness there. That's okay. I don't mind that. But if we had a replay of what 50 was doing, he, he literally put a knee into this guy on the ground twice. So 15 yards, it's going to hurt. Yeah, it is. Costly penalty. His teammates are not happy with him either. Yeah, and, and that's a guy that's a leader and doesn't make mistakes like that. And credit Belleville for keeping their head, keeping their cool, and avoiding some penalties in these hot moments. Yeah, the only thing that really saved them on that was, was a spot foul, and he was doing it way down here. So it didn't yeah. cost them 15 yards from the line of scrimmage. So they're still capable of picking up they have now yeah it should be on the eight all right so third and eight it was a pre-snap penalty no play 
that was a big penalty, and it kind of changes your entire play call, because like we were talking, once you're inside the five, you only got 15 yards to run passing plays. This may actually be a blessing for Belleville, because it's giving them more space. Rapley right, Shotty Wilson slot right, but the throw is left corner, and it's over the head of the intended receiver, Caldwell. And so fourth down, and, and, I mean, I don't know what you do. You do have a kicker in Belleville, uh, but I don't think Crowell's gonna kick the football here. The benefits of being up five compared to being up two aren't a ton. I guess a field goal can't beat or can beat you That's if you're right. only up two. Yeah. So it puts you in that. But if you put a touchdown here and you have the game in your hands, you're up two scores. Yeah. I like this gamble, but I also am weary of it. Rapley at the bottom of the screen. Watch Shotty Wilson in the slot right on a fourth and eight. 6.14 to go. Underwood in trouble and is sacked back at the 18. The Tractors get traction from their defense and double nickels. Wow, what a play there for your team for the night. I mean, one of the Parker boys just getting in there and doing his thing. Swallowed up the quarterback. But I'm interested, uh, that drive was very interesting because you have a freshman quarterback and you take the ball and you put it in his hands to make the decision on every play down there. They didn't even run the ball. Yeah, it, very interesting. I mean, it shows that the coach trusts him to make the right decision. Yeah. It just didn't work out on that particular drive. Yeah. And, and you talk, we, we talked with Jermaine Crowell this week at practice, and he said, look, we don't want to put him in spots where he has to do too much. He's got a lot of skills. He's got a lot of guys around him. Let other guys make plays for him. Some of those pieces, though, have been taken from him tonight. But I agree with you. I, I think maybe you run it a couple times at least, right? It looked like they had the edge on the one play that they got called for illegal motion. Yeah. So I, I maybe would have gone back to that, but they didn't. And one, here we are. One thing we know, a statement's been made. Uh, Belleville's respecting the run defense of the Tractors. Tractor football down two, six minutes left. And how about a play in a TFL from behind? And we keep seeing this guy. How about Casey Gordon, who's made a couple plays as Covington? is slow to get up at the 10 yard line. This is concerning if you're Fortson. Well, he's had a couple plays earlier where he has been limping off the field and it looks like a cramp that they're trying to stretch out. And there's two players down. Yeah, who's across the way? Is that Saeed? It looks like another cramp. My goodness, yeah. Well, that show, this just shows how hard these guys are playing tonight. Like they're, all the lactic acid is in this game right now, Chad. And that is what's going on because it looks like they're just trying to stretch them out. You know, you can see him rubbing the back of his leg right there. I think if any football player who's ever had a cramp knows exactly how that feels, or you wake up in the middle of the night with a Charlie horse, those are not fun. No, sir. I've had a few of those. I can remember laying on the Silver Dome floor, oh, like God. running on cement, laying up looking at me like, what is this? What is this ball in my calf? Oh, the Silver Dome. Yeah. So Get, getting tackled on that turf was ridiculous. It's like playing in a sandlot. Yep. Well, there's some famous alums for Dearborn Fortson, but namely the hot one as of late is Robert Sala, a 97 grad of Fortson and the current head coach of the New York Jets, played under Coach Zaban as his defensive coordinator. Jeff Stergalis was the head coach then. Signed a five-year deal with the Jets last year as their head coach. I know a lot of folks wanted him here in Detroit. Uh, the first uh, Muslim head coach in NFL history and he is a proud tractor. He's worn it in his uh, pre pe uh, press conferences. He's proud to be from here. And I know uh, he was a hot name for the Detroit Lions, but Robert Sala, a proud son of Dearborn Fordson. Yeah, the guy's an absolute beast. What he did with the 49ers defense, and then obviously he's with the Jets now. I was watching the Jets pregame the other day, and he, he's getting his workout in, running the stairs before the game. What a beast. I love it, I love it. Sala, a guy that, uh, Played at Northern Michigan, coached at Central Michigan, slept on a couple couches as a GA, just trying to make ends meet. <laughs> and uh, that? volunteered in the NFL as an assistant and got his uh, big break with Coach LaFleur. Mm -hmm. Matt LaFleur down at Houston, and boy, has he made the best of it. Robert Sala 
uh, quite a man and a very impressive, not just a football coach, but you talk to the people at Fordson, and he's one of their proud sons because of the person he is. Yeah, and it speaks volumes to how he got to where he is. You know, he's, he, he literally started started low on the totem pole, moved, worked his way up, just pure effort got him to where he is, and obviously talent comes along with that. But yeah. it's his effort and his will that got him to where he is. That's right. All right, we're ready. The cramps have gone away or at least gone off the field. Three to the right, one to the left. It is a storyline, though, to pay attention to and note. Osmond looking left, looking for Antonio Gates Jr. And he's oh. dropped it at the 40. An outstanding defensive play by another D1 commit. It's coming up next week. Mr. Caldwell, where is he going? That is a great defensive play, but also Antonio Gates Jr. could have had this ball. Uh, it was in his hands. What a great throw by a quarterback from Fordson. But look, it, it's in his hands. He yeah. just doesn't come down with it. Wow. Caldwell reached in a little distraction yep. and, and just enough, but that's a, that's the matchup folks came to see and pay for and watch and eat popcorn with Mr. Caldwell and Mr. Gates. And this is eerily similar to the first half. Gates in the second half hasn't really had a catch yet. We got about five minutes left to go. Yep, yep. And this is the time he took over in the first half. So we'll see if the coach keeps going to that well. All right. School record 12 wins for Belleville, back to back in 18 and 19. Semi-finalists, they lost last year to the eventual state champion, West Bloomfield. They lost in 18 to the eventual state champion, Chippewa Valley. 525 left, Osmond at a third and long. Gonna step up in trouble over the middle and in between Gates and Muhammad. Saeed, and it's punting time for Fordson on fourth and long. Yeah, that's interesting. You saw Fordson kind of go away from what was working for them early. You know, we were talking about the RPO, bringing your slot receiver in motion, and we didn't see that at all on that drive. To me, that was been kind of their bread and butter to get them to where they need to get to. I think a little bit of that might have been with the cramps, perhaps, with Leonard Covington. They had something rolling there. Who yeah. was the other guy with cramps across the way? Did you see that? I did not get a I number either. on him. I couldn't tell if that was Muhammad. I, I thought it was 58. Okay. But I could be wrong. Yeah, that looked right. So, fourth and 14. Yeah, he's on the side. 58's on the sideline taking water right now, so that was probably him. Thank you for that. Yep. That's what I'm here for, Chad. <laughs> Hassan Shinawa, who could be a Division One snapper if he wants to be. He's very good. Had he sod backed upon it, he doubles as the kicker. And he stands with his heels in the shadows of the tractor end zone. And we've got a timeout. Jeremiah Caldwell smells something a little funny. He was and it's fired not up. falafel. He was fired up calling that timeout, running down the sideline. And I'm not sure if it was something his team was misaligned. They were missing a player, but he came in. How about that food today from Lashish? Oh. I can still smell the garlic on the breath of Evan Westfall. He was, he was like doing shots of uh, garlic sauce back there. I caught him in the back room. How good is Lashish? I mean, they haven't really gone away from 30 years ago when you and I used to come down here and visit Lashish. Absolutely amazing food right there on Michigan Avenue. The, the lamb chops, delicious. I, like shrimp, that was my first time having shrimp from Lashish. It was amazing. They they gave us such a great platter. The tahini, everything, man, just so good. Yep, no, no doubt. You can catch them uh, www.lashishrestaurant.com 313-582-8400. Fortson to punt it or at least show punt. Hattie Saad is back in his own goal line. This is a big punt to get off. The snapper is Hassan Shinawa. And the punt's a high hanger. And it's going to be taken at the 35 yard line. Watch out. To the 20, to the 15, to the 10, to the house. Is he in? Touchdown! Wow. Belleville shot out of a rocket. And into the end zone is Kevin Sims. Touchdown, Tigers. 35-yard punt return for a touchdown. Into the end zone like Superman. He left at the five-yard line and was able to dive into the end zone. But what happens here on this punt, this doesn't go to the normal punt returner. Right. The normal punt returner is back. If you look, that, that is not the punt returner. He's, he's there to block, but it kind of forts in 
was gunning towards the main punt returner, and here you go. Look at this dive into the end zone. He literally left from the five yard line. Wow, wow. 36 yard touchdown return officially for Sims. And here comes the ever important extra point. This moves it from one possession to two possessions. It'll be out of the short snap of Michael Hurst, the hold of Christian Rapley, and the kick of Braden Lane. Late getting out of the field is Yarbrough with 5.08 to go. Big extra point, snaps high, kicks up, and the kick is good. And boy, is that a big one from Braden Lane. Great job by the holder. Let's get another look at that. I, I mean, you're right. How about the holder, Christian Rapley, the receiver, to come down? Let's first look at the touchdown stick. Yeah, here he is. He's got the outside lane. And he, you, you thought 20 was going to beat him to the angle. But look at this. Leaving from the five-yard line in midair, hand on the ground. That is... It's like Superman. And it's a legit touchdown. Yeah. We see on the replay, ball yep. crossed, ball touched ground, then it went loose. But I'll tell you what, Kevin Sims, what a play to put his team up by nine, 21 to 12. A two possession game now, it's Stick. Tough. And it's tough now with his tractor's offense. We saw a quick strike before. That's, this is expected though. That's what I was just gonna say, and it was around the same time too in the first half. Five minutes left, they haven't really had the big play. They needed some big momentum. So this is the time that they can get it. But I'm still going back and forth with that punt return, a 36 yard punt return. And it's just kind of a, a happenstance that that happened because you had the deep guy receiving the ball. You had the short guy, the up man that was supposed to be blocking and it, it got kicked to the blocker to the far right. So all the people that were pursuing the punt returner, they didn't know they didn't know where the ball was. Right. And that's what resulted in the touchdown. Like that's that's half luck and half skill, but all the way it's it's leading to a two scores on the scoreboard. Yeah, you're right. And, and but that speed, my goodness. Ooh, when he turned that corner. And we can talk about the speed too, but the jumping ability. The jumping ability. That is you know, for those scoring at home, a yard is three feet. So for him to leave from the five yard line, that is 15 feet. He had to lunge through the air, 15 feet. <laughs> Kevin Sims into the end zone for a 36 yard punt return touchdown to make this a nine point game. And uh, I mean, Belleville's needed guys to step up and, and Sims is one of those guys who's filled in at the receiver spot. And now he's filling in in a big special teams role. That's where depth comes into play. You're getting those special teams moments. Not done yet though, 5.08 to go. Fortune trying to avoid a five game losing streak from Belleville. And trying to avoid their first loss of the season. The first score of the second half comes with five minutes left in this game. Kevin Sims. It's been a good second half, hard hitting both these teams. You know, big penalties and big turnovers have really hurt Fordson today. And I think they, if they could take those back, they, they'd probably be in the lead. Shinawa to pitch it back. This is to Gate to the 20, to the 25, across the 30, to the 35 before he leaps into the arms <laughs> of the Tigers. Reserve linebacker Deshaun Green. He's coming up a little limpy, Gates. Ugh. I could watch him play all day. I mean, I, I didn't understand why they were throwing it back 10 yards on, the, on that kickoff return, but then you see the Jukes and just how fast he can get in and out of his break. It's like lightning. It's unreal, really. It and, really is. And he's savvy and, and feel, feels for the game, right? I mean, he's making cuts that guys just don't naturally make. Offsides on the... Uh, kickoff so Fortson will move that thing up five yards get take a little advantage of it three to the right again we'll keep an eye hate to keep harping on it but this is important for Fortson Mohammed Saeed in the slot right Antonio Gates one-on-one -on -one in the bottom of the screen against Caldwell yeah if they don't cover with safety help that's where I'm going Osman back to pass, looking right side over the middle, Shinawa, and it is caught at the 42 yard line around Yarbrough. And Antonio Gates Jr.
comes over and says, hey, don't get a penalty and talk trash. Right. That's leadership right there. Yeah, get them on the field. That's where your trash talking should be. But like we were talking before the play, if they didn't roll the safety over to... They picked it up, okay. Yeah, they'll wave off the flag. Officials got together, made the right call there. But Gates is right. This is where you can't let the emotions get away. Right. But on that play, they did roll the safety over to help Gates and to help uh, the cornerback on the left side, and that's what left the middle of the field open. So it's kind of pick your poison, and that's what we're talking about. Even when Gates doesn't catch the ball, he's impacting the play. Yeah, and I like how Osmond looked off that time, too. He's using him as a decoy the right way. Three to the right, one to the left. Under five to go. Fortson down two scores. They got to hustle. They cannot waste time now. Harb to the left. Covington is out right now. There's a comeback route that's short and wide. And Gates is a bit worked up. Wanted a flag, perhaps. And instead, it's second and long. Yeah, I think he's talking about the trash talking that he wants a flag for. You know, because he's, like we've been saying all game long, these guys, ev after every play, you can point to at least two guys jawing at each other. Well, that's good football unless you get into the situation where you had the personal foul with the couple of knees while the guys was on the ground. Sure. Can't do that. Nope. Osmond 14 to 20 for 207 yards and two touchdowns in this game. The senior quarterback. 6 190 pounder. We'll send three to the right, one to the left. The one to the left, keep an eye on. That's Hakeem. Second and 10. Quietness and a cool breeze drifts ac across Charles Justice Field. And this is a setup screen pass left side. And that, really the first ball we've seen tonight from Osmond where you think, eh, not good. Yeah, I don't think he had to retreat as far as he did. I mean, he almost ran 15 yards backwards to yep. try to throw that. I think, you know, for a nice screen pass, you almost want to get hit. Like, you want them to feel that they're going to get you. So maybe about seven yards behind the line of scrimmage, but he went back around 15 to 18. Yeah. And that's a tough throw to even throw back 20 yards to get to the line of scrimmage. Storyline in this one, the two turnovers by the Tractors, including make it three turnovers by the Tractors, one that was returned for a touchdown. That was the biggest play of the game to me so far. Sure. Until now. Yeah, <laughs> hopefully. <laughs> Perhaps. <laughs> this Belleville defense has done a nice job of keeping everything in front of them. Very talented defense, 4-3 front, very active and athletic and speedy. They like their back end the best. Third and 10, Osmond's pass is short again on the comeback route. And it's going to come down to a fourth down and 10 now with 4.15 left. And this is a key play for an offense that uh, hasn't converted much on this drive. And you're starting to see it in Fortson's body language. This is the first time I've noticed it the entire game. Like, you know, just kind of the throw your shoulders, throw your hands up. Like, what's going on here? They need some spark right now. And this is when you go to your guy, Antonio Gates Jr. You have to. Yeah. It's fourth and 10. I mean, I'm, I'm throwing at him even if it's in triple coverage. He will come over to the sidelines and say something to the near side official. Saying, watch them hold me. <laughs> they put a hand on me. Throw a flag, please. And now they'll rotate over the top of Belleville as Yarbrough will go back. It looks like they have the safety covering. Yeah, that's a good timeout by Belleville. It, it, I did not like that defensive lineup for them. No, we'll keep it right here. You talk about Belleville, three and one coming in. Lost a couple weeks ago after 27 straight wins. Under Jermaine Crowell, a guy whose mentors he speaks so highly of and passionate about. Crowell graduated from Detroit Central High School, went on to play at Hillsdale. His mentors, Thomas Wilcher. Leroy Bogard, Woody Thomas, Robert Hunt, who's his associate head coach. And it's been an impressive seven year run for Crowell. 47 and five. 
the last four and a half years. Crowell, take a look at it. It's about as impressive as it gets. He has coached him up. Belleville, before he got there, had not been a winning program for several years. But he took him to back-to-back 12-win -back seasons in 18 and 19. And uh, he, he's done a nice job, but he wants to finish the deal. Semifinals aren't good enough for him and this talent that he brings. Yeah, you know, when you get to that point and you're that winning of a coach, obviously winning is what you're all about. And to not have the state title to go along with all those accolades, it's got to sting just a little because that, that's ultimately what you're playing for every single season. So anything short of that, I'm sure he'd take a 500 record and three state titles. <laughs> I think that's right. So here we go. This is the ball game for all intents and purposes with 4.15 left. A fourth and 10 at the 41 yard of Belleville. Osman will send two to the right, two to the left. And it's the running back and the shotgun with him. And Hussein Beydoum. Play of the game here. Clean snap, has time, looking deep, down the middle, has a man and a pass interference call is thrown. Flag is thrown, looking for Gates, and there's still life in Dearborn. I don't know how you cover this guy. Once again, the multiple moves that he has on this route, at first you think it's gonna be a cur curl route, they pump fake, and then he flies out into the middle. It was, I mean, Honestly, if we could focus in on Gates on the replay, it's amazing how this guy gets in and out of breaks and just how smooth he is really in his is. transitions. And he's working against a guy that has offers from Tennessee and Michigan. I mean, you know, and two other guys. <laughs> oh, man, how about it? That quick twitch, man, it's one of the fastest I've seen in a long time. Yeah, I also thought, to be fair, Fortson got away with a hold there. I did not see that. I was watching down the field. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, you know, there's some things, but in a game it all evens out. Bottom line is Fortson's put themselves in position to keep this a game, and here they are with a first and 10 at the 26. And that's what happens when you take chances like that. Sometimes you get the pass interference, and it's just as good as the catch. That's right. Osmond looking right side, looking open in the end zone. Oh, incomplete. That Having is, to wait on the ball in the end zone. And it's incomplete. That was Hakeem Elgami in the end zone. What did, you, what did you see here, Stick? Double pass. Double pass, and uh, I don't think he got there early. I just don't think he... Uh, oh, that is... That is close. Let's see that again. It, if we can slow it down, because I want to know if he beat him there. And if he did, it was by a half a second. Yeah, close bang bang play. Hard to fault it either way. But the double pass from Shinawa. Uh, I mean, that's that's about as bang bang as it gets. And they just got the call with Gates, so yeah. it's tough to get that flag twice in a row. That's right. First and, excuse me, second and 10 now from the 26. Osmond looking left side for Gates, and that is incomplete and no flag and no complaint from either player. And a lot of yapping and a fun matchup between Caldwell uh, and right now and Antonio Gates Jr. A couple of high power five players. And I like it, let the big boys play. You know, they were both hand fighting on that. We saw it on Gates touchdown here in the first half. Uh, just a good play. I like how they keep taking shots at the end zone. They're going for it. They're not afraid, and I love that. Covington is out of this game. He's been out since uh, early in the fourth, so there is a new running back in, Hussein Beydoun. Serviceable. Three to the right, one to the left. Gates one-on-one -on -one against the defensive back in safety, Jeremiah Caldwell. Double pass coming again. Chinawa right side. The throw all the way back. How about this? And a screen Ooh. set up. Watch out. Down the sideline and inside the 15 to the 14 yard line. Player lost his helmet. Flag went up. I'm not sure what that flag is for. Helmet came off and I believe the play's dead at that point or if a player participates. It's a flag. We'll see what okay. happens here. How about the play call, by the way? I mean, that's two double passes <laughs> on this drive alone. 
Baydoon. There also maybe was a face mask by Belleville's defense. So we'll see how they sort this out. I'm not sure if they should call any penalty on this play. That was a clean block. The helmet came off. I didn't see the player pursue or try to get back into the play. Uh, these refs, I wonder what they're thinking. Well, Love to be in this huddle. Yeah, I would too. He's pointing at the ground. That usually means they're going to call something. Oh, okay. Good. All right. They're calling nothing. And that's twice tonight. They've gotten together. They've picked up the flag and waved it off. I love that from the officiating. I really I do. do. I do, too. A very fine job. Entire game officiating. Give credit to the MHSAA and what they've been able to do. I mean, they've really gotten some officials and the support they need in officiating. And they need more. Keep supporting. So here we go. First and 10 from the 13. 344 to go. Fordson down 21 to 12. They're down two possessions. They got to hustle. Not a lot of time to waste. Three timeouts. Osman looking end zone. Got a man. Boom. Incomplete in the back of the end zone. Fine play back there. By the defensive back number 21, that's Charles Wilson, a guy we've called seemingly every quarter about five times. And this was a tough catch. The ball was a little bit behind him, but he still got a hand on it. Saeed, you know, we've seen him catch, what, over 150 yards tonight, so that's not outside his realm to pull that one down. So now we're in a second and 10. Boy, the second half is taking some time and it's been <laughs> worth the wait. This last five minutes has been almost an entire game in itself. It has. So here we go. Osmond and the tractors try to inch a little closer. Alex back to pass, sets up the screen, has a man down the left sideline, cut back in. Five, four, three, two, one, touchdown tractors. Hussein Baydoun into the blue end zone. And the tractors have cut it a little bit closer. Yeah, the extra point's gonna be massive on this, but what a great play call, and we'll give it up to the lineman. Look, you got big 56 out there just bear hugging his own man and pushing him down the field. 50, their center, after you know the personal foul that he had earlier in the half. It's good for him to get down there and get that block. What a great play call. A lot of misdirection on that. Yeah. Great play call, Osama Abdul Hassan, the offensive coordinator. So 21-18 with 3.20 to go. Extra point attempt coming. You would need to go for one, that's all. And it'll be out of the snap of Shinawa. The hold from Mohamed Zaban. He doubles as the linebacker. He has really soft hands. The kick is up. And there's no question that thing is good. Take note of that. This Fortune will come back and need, perhaps, a field goal. Well, here we go, partner. Got ourselves a game. 21 to 19, 320 left, and all of a sudden, Fortune's a stop away from getting themselves back in this one. There were some folks getting ready to leave. I saw some folks in this stadium <laughs> starting to walk out. And uh, the head coach for Dearborn Forts and Fuad Walker Zaban in his 15th season said, uh-uh, don't go anywhere. What a story Zaban is. He came over from Lebanon at five years of age, uh, grew up in the south end of Dearborn, learned uh, from his South End community at the Joe Hamoud Center. Fell in love with athletics, fell in love with football. And this guy really loves the game, and he's an outstanding leader for young men. And he played here under Charles Justice in the late 80s. He's a 88 grad of Fortson. Also played running back at Grand Valley. And he learned how to coach. And boy, how about his mentors? Jeff Beck, Brian Kelly, Brian Van Gorder, Jeff Monken at Grand Valley. I mean, he had some legendary coaches. Those were guys at Notre Dame and Georgia, the Jets. He learned quite a bit from those guys. And he also spread, uh, you know, credits the guys that have helped him along the way from Fortson and Coach Justice, uh, Jeff Stergalis, et cetera. But uh, it's a great story. Walker Zaban coming here from Lebanon and learning this game and falling in love with it 
in the south end of Dearborn where he's from. Very proud man. Football is the greatest game in the world, if you ask me. So it's no surprise that somebody comes yeah. over here and fall in love with it. <laughs> I absolutely love this sport. And I asked him about language and how they use it to his advantage. And he says, yeah, we speak Arabic. Why wouldn't it's, you? It's a primarily uh, Arabic-speaking team. And he says, hey, we got, got, we got calls in Arabic. And, and our guys that are non-Arabic speaking have to learn them. And he says, I let the kids come up with them. We have fun with it. Some are funny Arabic words. Some are not funny. But the kids learn. They pick them out. And uh, that's how they call a lot of things. He says, we'll use it to our advantage. He goes, but we'll check the roster and make sure the other <laughs> team doesn't have any Arab-speaking kids. we got to check on who we play. They just have a, a translator at middle linebacker. <laughs> But yeah, it's fun. I mean, and that's that's you know like Peyton Manning yelling Omaha. He just he's yelling any word. So you know you could use any word to do anything. Like Lucy used to be our left if it was going left, and it's just interesting the the vernacular that any football team decides to use. And it's looking like they're lining up for the onside kick. Yeah, let's see. Nope. No, they're gonna put right. this thing away with. Patty Saad into the end zone, and that's always a safe bet. So here we go. This is uh, what we came for. 21 to 19. We had a fabulous week five clash with yeah. Dakota and Jim yeah. last week. Came down to the final possession, and we couldn't tee this thing up any better. Number four, Belleville. Number six, uh, Fordson, and, and what a dandy it's been. It's, we've had a fine time here. Yeah, it's been a great game, but not the type of game I thought it would play. I thought this was going to be a high-scoring 48-45 to 45 type game up and down the yeah, field. Yeah. But here we're sitting, in, it's been somewhat of a defensive battle, obviously, clearly for Belleville getting those three turnovers. And Fordson's got to feel at least pretty good about themselves right now and expect the intensity to pick up right now, knowing that Belleville's got to run the ball. That's right. It was a nine-play, 65-yard drive. It took up just a minute 48 of game time, 30 minutes of real time. That's right. <laughs> And uh, in the end, it's a touchdown for Baydoon. Baydoon now with uh, five rushes for 20 yards and a touchdown. So here we go. Belleville football, their own 20, 320 left. Nobody's leaving here. We got a ball game. Handoff left side and back in is Pitchford. And Davion Pitchford, who we have not seen in a minute, is stopped for a short game. So big moment now for Fortson's defense behind Munther Muhammad, their D coordinator, with three minutes left. Clock is, okay, I was gonna say, it gets a little sticky, doesn't it? I think it skips a few seconds, but yeah. Two timeouts left for Fortson. They elect not to use one there. Second down and 10, no gain on the play. Handoff, pitch for it again, and he's going nowhere. Parker swallows him up. That's one of the twins, Javon Parker, a future college player. Fortson's calling timeout to conserve some time. So Fortson calls one of their two timeouts left. And it's with 2.35 to go, and the Tigers leading by two. Woo. These next two plays are pretty much going to determine whether this is, <laughs> whether Fordson will have a chance to win this game or not. This is a big play coming up right now on third down. 349 yards of total offense for Fordson, 173 yards of total offense for Belleville. The difference in this game, we've talked about it, the three turnovers by Fordson, but they can make amends with that potentially. We've got some updates coming for you. De La Salle, the number one team in Division Two, has knocked off Orchard Lake St. Mary's tonight, 49 to 25 in Orchard Lake and has stopped St. Mary's four-game win streak. Meanwhile, Catholic Central and Rice will play in the Boys Bowl on Sunday at one. And Bloomfield Hills High School wins 41 to 14. And Stony Creek knocks off Southfield A&T 21 to 14. Final score, Sterling Knight Stevenson knocks off Dakota 31 to 16. And some other scores. Later, Canton 28, Ovi 21, another KLAA score. And here we go. 
five left. Third and nine play of the game coming up, Stick. And the bleachers are shaking right now. The fans are up, they're on their feet. Underwood back to pass, looking left, got a man, called! Oh! The 43-yard line, went down and stretched it off the turf. And the catch by Jeremiah Caldwell, his first of the game, and it couldn't have come at a better time. I thought he was overthrown on that. For, once again, another amazing diving play by Belleville and trusting your freshman quarterback on third and long to make that play. What an incredible catch, incredible. Wow. The guy that's going to college to play the defensive side of the ball, he's got offers from Michigan State in Tennessee, he decommitted from Kentucky, where his recruiting coordinator, Coach Clanksdale, went to Michigan. And so where do you think he's strongly considering? Michigan. <laughs> Handoff up the middle, gain of about two, and with just one timeout left. They take it now. Fortson's gonna take it now at the 40-yard line. And uh, they've gotta be really tight with their defensive play here. One more first down and it's officially over. Yeah, there's no room for error right now. That was such a huge play call. The, for the coach to come out and call that on the third down, you know, it, it, that's what you do. You put it on yourself. You don't want to give your opponents a chance. You don't want to, you know, just run the ball, give them the ball back, and hope you hang on. If you got a chance to secure the game, you do it. And I love that type of coaching. I love it. Big time players make big time plays in big spots. And that's exactly what Mr. Caldwell did. He's a fun player to watch. We've seen him all night matched up against Antonio Gates Jr. And Gates has won some of those battles. Oh yeah. But Caldwell's won some too. And, and he's won maybe one of the biggest tonight, and, and that's that play down the sideline to get the first down on third and 10. Well, and that's what we were talking about. You know, the trash talking can go on, but you really want to get someone back? Make a play like that. That is how you change momentum. That is how you change the game. And if you're Fortson right now, perhaps you try to tackle the football, and it's a, it's a risky proposition at times too, because you can't give up the first down, but. Yeah, this is when, you know, first guy in holds him up, second guy in takes the ball. Frank Janos taught you well. <laughs> Thanks, Coach. Frank Janos, a former tractor here at Dearborn Fordson. First down. And there is a first down run off the left side by the sophomore who will ice this baby for the Belleville Tigers. Colby Reed with a first down run, or it appears a first down run. Move the chains, I think. Yep, yep. And this game is over. Barring anything weird on a snap. But, ooh, you can kind of take a breath now. What, what an intense last three minutes of this game. Really has been. We'll take a timeout on the field as well with 145 left. And Belleville seemingly icing this thing away. Don't go anywhere, though. 21-19, we're back in the Friday Night Clash right after this. The innocence of youth. Is there anything any better? But soon they'll be in high school and facing all the same challenges you faced. How to make friends. How to fit in. How to be cool. We want our children to have everything they'll need to live fulfilling and productive lives. Make sure the kids in your family are among the more than 300,000 participants here in Michigan who take part in high school sports. Ride the bike of shame, get tons of equipment, and free fitness training. Join today for just $10 a month. Twenty-one to nineteen, Sam Stick Day. My name is Chad Bush. Alex Westfall, your executive producer tonight. Glad you're with us on the Friday Night Clash, Week Five. Thank you to the great folks at Dearborn Fortson for being wonderful host. We want to thank Jeff Del Judas, the athletic director. We want to thank Fuad Walker Zaban, also for his help. We want to thank Jer Jerome, or excuse me, Jermaine Crowell. We'll try to get his thoughts after the game. But his Tigers have been the story tonight, and they've taken advantage of some miscues by Fordson. They've come up in some big spots. 
Yeah, opportunistic. I think that's the word that we could use tonight for Belleville. Not only did they force those three turnovers, the punt return was huge. Special team scoring in a game like this, when you're only putting 21 points on the board, but one of those is a punt return, that is massive in something like this. Then your defense puts up your other touchdown. So really, Fortson has shut down Belleville's offense. They really have only allowed one touchdown on offense. Yeah. But, you know, that's why this is a team sport and a complete game in all three facets. We'll see Orchard Lake St. Mary's and Brother Rice next week from Molesky Field in Orchard Lake. The Eaglets got pounded tonight by De La Salle as the Pilots double up the Eaglets. But we'll have Brother Rice in St. Mary's next week, October already next Friday. You believe it? That'll be week, week six on the Friday Night Clash. George Port's last home game. That's right. That's right. Already the, that'll be their last home game. Hard to believe. There's a handoff right side. And this sophomore, I'll tell you what, he might have been fifth or sixth or seventh on the depth chart to start the season. Somebody better keep an eye on uh, number 35, Colby Reed. This sophomore's done some things nice tonight. There was a bobble exchange there, too. It looked like it, yeah. <laughs> Your thoughts on doing a shotgun instead of just a, a knee? I mean, is there any reason to run a play? Not right now. On that, okay, you know, maybe. But, yeah, it's tough to go put your quarterback under center when he isn't comfortable there, though. So, you That's know, right. use his athleticism, catch the snap. But, yeah, if I'm you, I'm catching the snap, taking a knee. Yeah, we'll see what they do here now on a first and 10. The 20-yard line. They will turn. They will give again. And it's the sophomore around the corner. He gets out of bounds, stops the clock, and uh, looks like a late personal foul. You know, there's some thought here, by the way. You're down by two points. A touchdown makes you down eight points. Yes, you'd have to block the extra point. But let them score, that's what you're saying? I mean, I, I don't know. Is there any other option other than that? You let them take a knee, you'd have no more timeouts? No, if they're willing to run the play. I mean, you saw it with Todd Gurley last year in the Lions. You know, they, they drug him into the end zone to get the ball back, and then it worked out for the Lions. Landers is coming off the field. This is their top prospect on the line, and a great young man in Mikhail Landers. They love his intelligence. He's a bright player. He's not just a physical specimen that bends well and a guy that uh, can punch and bend and has good size and good feet, but he really has a knowledge and understanding of the game that makes him superior. Kamari Landers is the best Fortson lineman ever, they say. That's high accolades, too. You talk about Fortson and their history, and they feel their best team was their 1971 team. And that was with guys like Mike Berry and Bill Varvary, a team that went undefeated and a mythical state championship in 1971. They would follow that up in 1972 with maybe even a better team, but they, they were undefeated. But back then it was a mythical state championship. They, they had mythical state champions. In <laughs> fact, my dad, Pat Bush, who's on stack crew tonight, always brags about his mythical state championship from Mount Pleasant Sacred Heart. Hey, a ring's a ring. I'll take it. <laughs> now, I got to show a lot of respect to Antonio Gates Jr. right here. Uh, you know, they've been jawing all game. It's been an intense game, but he just showed love to the players on Belleville. And that's what you want. Yeah. And this kid has impressed me at every level of being a leader tonight. And I want to say something about him. They talk and rave about how he's so good with children. Okay. And he's a very good young man that just does good things. And they really like the full human being Antonio Gates Jr. is. This ball game is over tonight. 21 to 19 is your final score. And uh, don't go anywhere. Joey Radio is going to talk with the winning head coach, Jermaine Crowell in his seventh year when we get a moment. But uh, just a couple of scores in the second half. Teams traded touchdowns. We'll have highlights of that. And uh, Stick, quickly, your thoughts on, on just the way this game transpired. I mean, another week, another excellent football game right here on the Friday Night Clash. Couldn't have asked for a better matchup, and it lived up to the hype. It was physical. They were big. We saw big athletic plays. We saw all types of just great football tonight that I, I absolutely love it, man. And <laughs> the Friday night vibe that we have here with the, like you said, we got a nice little breeze coming through. You can smell the fall air and just great football is being played. And we're lucky enough to have it right here 
on the Woodward Sports Network and the prep, and thank you to Planet Fitness. But, yeah, if we can get, what, what do we got, four games left in the regular season? Four or five. We wow, keep it rolling. man. Wow. Wow. If we can get two more just like this, I'll be happy. But, yeah, the last two weeks have been amazing football. Had a lot of fun with you tonight. We'll come back and put a bow on the show, show you the second half scores, and recap the stats of this one. But it's final from Fordson. And your final score tonight, Belleville 21. And it looks like Fordson 19. Joey Radio is down with Coach Jermaine Caldwell. And let's go down to Joey. Stay right here. Coach is got the team in the background. Jo and we are live right now after a big victory. Coach Jermaine Crowell, how are you doing? Hey, I'm doing all right. We got a W, so I'm doing all right. Yeah, so going down that line, I mean, can you walk me through the end of the game with the handshakes and what was going down? I mean, it's a rivalry, and it's, it's always intense. You know, I like, I'm glad that the kids kept class, and, you know, everybody was able to shake hands, and we might see them again in the state playoffs a little bit later. So, you know, we might lock up with them a little bit later. Yeah, our thoughts on the game, down to the wire, you get that W. At the last second, this one went down to. I mean, most of our games, besides last year, typically are like that with them. A uh, lot, of, lot of talent out on the field, two good, great coaching staffs. I mean, and we, our conference, the KLAA, typically does pretty well in the state playoffs, and, and they typically do well as well as we. So I, I, would, I would expect nothing less. And final thoughts for the boys tonight home and relax and, and, and chill and have some fun you know I, I mean this was a big game and you know I want them to enjoy it and and I saw my, my young quarterback grow up a little bit so I'm a young quarterback make some clutch plays so a lot of young kids out there made made big time plays sound like a proud coach well I mean we, we growing I told you it's always a it's always a process you know where we are right now won't be where we gonna be in, in a couple of weeks so you know we just trying to get better every week Congratulations. Go enjoy that with your team, coach. Appreciate you, brother. Totally just messed up that handshake, but good <laughs> W tonight. It's all good, all right? Next time I'll get it right. Back to you guys. Friday Night Clash. Thanks, Joey. That's great stuff, man. We appreciate it. Good stuff from you, Coach Caldwell. And uh, what a fun night. You hear it. Coach Caldwell's proud. His guys had to fight on the road. Uh, he's done a wonderful job, and he runs uh, his record since he's introduced himself uh, four and a half years ago to 48 and five. And not only do you hear it, you see it. You see yeah. the smile on his face. You know, he's looking around. He, he's happy with the performance. And we talked about it, him trusting his quarterback. He, he put him in a bunch of positions tonight that me and you were like, he's a freshman quarterback. Why are you using him so much? But what he said about, hey, I watched my young quarterback grow up tonight. That's, that's an amazing feeling as a coach. Yeah, it's fun, isn't it? And, and a guy, by the way, that's 14 and turned 13 a couple weeks ago. <laughs> How about it? Uh, really stand up for Mr. Underwood, uh, the freshman quarterback. Uh, let's take a look at some of the highlights uh, in this game in the second half. There were two touchdowns. There weren't a lot of highlights, but it was enough. Both teams uh, scored, and, and this was the score stick that really got Belleville going this punt return. Yeah, this was everything in the game. I mean, Belleville was, like we talked about, struggling on offense through the entire game, but not only did they get the punt return touchdown, they also got uh, you know a, a fumble return touchdown. So scoring in all three aspects of the game was huge. Sure and this was. was to get them back down two points. And uh, unfortunately, they just couldn't stop them at the end. Yeah, Baydu in there gets in. And then the huge conversion on third and 10 uh, to Crowell. Uh, what can you say about the pass from Underwood? Yes. In the catch by Jeremiah Caldwell. I called him Crowell. Pardon me. Jeremiah Caldwell. What a play by the future Spartan uh, or volunteer. And I'm thinking that's what the coach was referring to when he said, I watched my young quarterback grow up tonight. Because to trust him on third and ten, big game. If they get that stop, they get all the momentum coming back with the ball, only down two points. But he makes the completion, and the rest is history. Yeah. Let's run down a couple quick key numbers in this one. One of the biggest numbers that stood out was Fordson's turnovers. They turn it over in this game three times, and uh, that was a big part. Uh, Fordson had 12 first downs in this game. They rushed for 116 yards. They threw for 233. The quarterback, Osman, was 16 of 27 with one interception and three touchdown passes in the game. It was 349 yards of total offense for Fortson in the game. They averaged seven and a half yards per play. For Belleville, 
They had 14 first downs, 26 rushes for 43 yards. They really were limited in the run game tonight. Again, they were without Alexander. They were without Rouser. They did have some folks going against them, rushing the football. They made some money with a pass, as my partner said. 10 out of 15 in the air uh, for the freshman, Bryce Underwood, along with uh, his wide receivers that were great tonight. He got a little help from his friends all over the yard uh, in the receiving department. But uh, he was led uh, with the touchdown from Lee, and that was back in the first half, a 23-yard completion. Uh, all in all on this one, Stick, I know you talked about time of possession. Forts in 28 minutes and 15 seconds to just 17 minutes and 36 seconds uh, for Belleville. Yeah, those costly turnovers where they couldn't convert those long drives. I mean, when they came out in the second half, they had the ball the entire third quarter and didn't put it in the end zone. <laughs> Both teams were penalty laden, six for Forts and eight for Belleville. Didn't end up to bite Belleville in the game. And uh, the final score in this one, Dearborn Forts and falls at home, 21 to 19. Belleville advances, they're now four and one on the year. And uh, Forts and takes their first loss. They are also four and one on the year. Next, late, next week, we're at Orchard Lake St. Mary's. They'll take on Brother Rice in a big central division battle. Uh, one or two quick scores to get to you real quickly before we get out of here. A final score, uh, West Bloomfield 28, Lake Orion 21. That was up in Oxford. Or excuse me, that was up in Lake Orion. Close enough. <laughs> Clarkston 20, Oxford 17. How about Zach wow. Line, the first-year coach, former pro for the Saints. First head coaching gig, and he's putting up threats against some number one. Uh, Clarkston, so they get the win. Tight game. Tight games all around. Another fun one here, Stick. Yep. Um, thanks so much. We look forward to next week. Had a great time as always. Yeah, thank you for having me, and thanks Lashish for the delicious food. Thanks Planet Fitness for uh, giving us stuff to give out to the student section, and just thanks for the hospitality here at Fordson. You know, like I said, special night for me. This is where my grandfather went to high yeah. school, and it's really cool to see the building that he walked. Fun night for everybody. Want to thank our whole crew, Alex Westfall, your executive producer. I want to thank Ali Hadi and uh, Evan Westfall, Jamie Smythe on stats, a wonderful uh, camera crew as well. We are lucky to have some of the best in the business here at the prep, and uh, we look forward to more coverage coming your way next week. My name is Chad Bush for my partner, Sam Stick Day, and for Joey Namu, time to say goodnight. Once again, your final score from uh, Justice Field in Dearborn, it's Belleville, 21. Fortson 19. Thanks for watching the Week 5 Clash on the Prep presented by Woodward Sports. So long, everybody.